You're listening to the Mike O'Geeky Podcast. What's up, guys? Where are we at? I forgot. I've been out of town. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. We're at the Mike O'Geeky podcast. It's Monday night. Michael Monday nights, as I started calling them a couple days ago. Let's do this. Uh, 90 told me, he said, uh, Monday nights is new Saturday night. So uh, we're doing it. And then Tuesday night's going to be the new uh, Saturday night or the new Friday night. And anyway, we're, we're going to make Mondays and Tuesdays a, a lot of fun. Uh, so welcome. You know, we uh, we like to go deep so you guys can level up your at-home mycology game. Uh, I'm your host, Mike Ogeeky, and uh, we're all the way live. Like, hi, guys. I'm right here right now in my basement. My wife's packing for a trip, and uh, my kids hopefully are asleep directly above me. Uh, and we're going to talk some mushrooms tonight. So here's the idea. You know, everybody wants a flow hood, everybody wants a sterilizer, everybody wants a pressure cooker, everybody wants all the things, and all the things are great, and you need all the things, but sometimes you can't buy all the things right away, sometimes it takes a while, sometimes you don't even know if you want all the things yet, so, uh, you know, low-tech, that's what we're talking about tonight. We're going to talk about low-tech ways to achieve uh, actual mushroom cultivation in your home, uh, and we're going to talk to some guys who definitely know how to do it. Um, my buddy 90 has, uh, you know, built a brand uh, around good old fashioned Uncle Ben's. And uh, we're going to talk in depth about that and about him and his journey and uh, how he got where he got doing what he does. Uh, and then we're going to have on Shay of Microdex Mushrooms. He was on before um, telling his story. He's a guy who uh, enjoyed the medicinal benefits of uh, uh lion's mane and some some other uh medicinal mushrooms and was so affected by the by the change that he felt from from ingesting these medicinal mushrooms that he became an absolutely impassioned uh, mushroom cultivator and he uh he's got some interesting uh changes uh to his life more recently we're going to talk about those and he is going to do some low tech uh oven tech and inoculation uh live on the stream here tonight so that should be a lot of fun anyway thank you guys for being here um i, I know you guys have been bugging me about doing a real live so here we are hopefully i don't screw up guys um before we move on i want to shout out all my discord mods uh thank you very much guys uh hopefully some of you guys are in the chit chat yeah Whoops, technical glitch there. Like I said, we're live. Um, so, so yeah, you guys, uh, you guys keep the Discord going. We had a guy uh, this week. He made a comment in the Discord. He said uh, somebody asked a question, and the, and the guy's response uh, was, "Well, I'll answer that question for you because in this Discord, nobody helps anybody. Nobody answers any questions." We were like, "What? I mean, that's like what we're doing all day." Um, but anyway, uh, to that guy, I'm sorry. Sorry you feel that way. Um, I, I, we we spent a lot of time out of literally every one of our days uh, trying to help newbies out. But I, I do want to highlight that as the, the Discord grows, you know, there are more and more questions. It does get harder and harder to hit every single question. It, it becomes important to know how to use Discord, which is primarily a chat application. Um, but you got to know how to search for things. You got to, you know, do, do some searches. If you got a question, make, um, make a search your, your first step. And then if you can't find the answers you're looking for, then you, you know, post the question and hopefully one of us sees it and, and we'll help you out. And you can always direct message me or any of my mods. So just so you guys know, a uh, little growing pains here and there, you know, overall people seem happy, but just, just wanted to mention that. Um, also a uh, quick shout out to my, uh 70 some uh patreon supporters i really appreciate you guys um you know it means a lot to me that you guys are watching the show every week and going oh yeah i want i want this to keep going i, I want to support this guy so that so that we have content to to consume and 
um, you know, things to learn. I think there's still a lot for all of us to learn. I got some exciting things coming up in the next month or two here. Uh, I don't want to let too much out of the bag, but should be some, some fun, exciting events coming up. Uh, I am going to start doing, I had been, you know, do you guys know this hat? This guy right here. This is flawless, guys, just in case you, you, you didn't already recognize. That's, this this hat is pro. This hat's great. This is $25. This hat's a lot of money. I, I mean, my break even on this hat shipped was like almost $70. And, and I felt bad about charging people 70 bucks when I'm selling this hat for, uh, for, for, for 25 bucks. So a uh, new idea inspired by uh, Tree Digs Mycology Supplies. Uh, I think I'm going to start doing an occasional raffle. Um, I can use it to raise money to go on, you know, forays and, and little adventures. So we'll do things like that. We'll, we'll, we'll do giveaways for cool hats, you know, limited edition hats. Um, I also have the, the murdered out, uh, black geeky ghost hat. Um, so, so stay tuned this week. I'll, I'll, I'll do my first one. Hopefully the learning curve isn't too steep on these raffles. I want to get it right out of the gate. So, uh, stay tuned for that. If you guys want, you know, if, if this hat doesn't, uh, trip your trigger, Hopefully this hat does. And if not, then we got the murdered out, murdered out uh, geeky ghost hat. So either way, we got hats for you guys. I've been seeing a lot of people wearing hats. Uh, uh, my buddy uh, over at Mushroom Wonderland, he just sent me a quick uh, message the other day. He was wearing a hat and a t-shirt out mountain biking and uh, definitely was cool seeing people wear the gear. So I appreciate uh, the support. It's definitely another way you guys can support what we're doing over here. Um, so thank you. Anyway, so live, we're doing it. I mean, if we're going back live tonight, what better person to bring on than, I mean, he's a pro. He, he, he was, as far as I know, I think he was the first podcaster in, in our Cubensis community. Um, and he uh, has recently launched uh, a Patreon, or is about to, we'll find out in a second, um, with some really classic old podcasts uh, for, from the old Limitless crew and, and some other people, uh, pretty exciting stuff. I can't wait to, I have not heard some of these, so th this will be fun to hear. Anyway, so without further ado, let me welcome to the show, 90 Second Mycology. What's up, man? Yo, what is going on, everybody? What's I haven't up, heard you dude? say the date yet. Got to reiterate, we are live. It is Monday night, June 26, yes. 2023. Currently 908. 908. Eastern time. Because we're in the same time zone. Yeah. And I'm from I'm yes. from Geeky's area, but not anymore. I'm further south. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, so old stomping grounds, new stomping yeah. grounds. Yo, I just went down to Birmingham, Alabama, and it was so humid down there. That's how it is here. Yeah. I had to I had to buy a handkerchief and just, you know, dabble in the forehead from time to time. I was like, man, this is so so you human. Keep a damn sweat towel around your neck. I think I would just be full time rocking like a headband. I would just yeah, like do that. Track do suit that headband. That's what I would have to do. Oh, they have those neck fans now. You <clears throat> see those little neck fan that blows up on your face? I'm geeky. I don't know if I'm that geeky, but hey, I might desperate times call for you know desperate measures. So maybe I would. I don't know. Yeah, but look at you. You're like fully tucked up. You get you. Oh you yeah, so you got mentioned the, the orange bow tie. You are ready to go. You mentioned the OG uh, Uncle Ben Live, um, ninety Live guy. Yeah, so I did a lot of podcasts with the good fun guy, and yep. well, I mean, I didn't call him podcasts. I just call him live streams. I right now on my YouTube channel, I still have a live stream playlist with stuff that's still left. So um, I did a solo live stream that's all about the history of magic mushroom cultivation indoors Ooh, okay. and that's really cool a lot of people forget that i have that and that's really cool to go back and watch because i've start from maria sabina all the way up to uncle ben tech and tonight's all about low-tech mushroom farming so it, go check that out and then yeah so the patreon it's not launched yet it's almost ready so it's gonna launch we're with waiting dude we're, we're here those two, i got my money it. i'm those ready two, the two limitless genetics live streams. As soon as stuff went down, everybody's like, "Where'd those live streams go?" I didn't delete them. Luckily, I just made them private. Mm -hmm. So the the Patreon is going to launch with those, as well as a bunch of other videos that YouTube deleted that a lot of people probably haven't seen yet, like OG old ass videos. 
right. um, on top of the private 90 Discord server, uh, the exclusive microwave tech video. And then once it launches, I'm going to follow up with Ziploc tech and a bunch of other stuff. So you can Wait, join the wait what? list. what? Ziploc tech? Okay, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah join the wait list. Just patreon.com slash 90 second mycology. And you'll be notified right away when it goes live. And I'm almost there. Like I'm touching up the microwave tech video. Nice. Get the donation shout outs in the beginning. And speaking of donations, you got Michael Bones, late for an enemy, late for an enemy, Mike. Oh, I can't. Oh, late for dinner, Mike. And Kieran Labs all have donated so far. Super chat to this. Kieran Labs is tonight. Michael Bones and Kieran Labs. The These are the homies. I mean, these guys always show love and support. I, I really appreciate you it. You know, like I always say, how many viewers, if we all do, if we all throw a dollar in, think about it. And you already mentioned the supporters on your Patreon, so all the support you can get. Yeah, I think um, so. So when I was uh, I was at a funeral um, and uh, talking to a, a distant family member on my wife's side of the family, and uh, she's a, a young um, uh, composer, uh, going to school, getting getting a degree in composition, and uh, you know she's talking about the doing all the things, the, the Instagram, the, this, the YouTube and all that. And I was like, yeah, I pulled out the, the rookie mycologist playbook. I was like, yeah, you got to do all the things. Do you have your Patreon set up? Do you have your, you know, your, uh, Shopify channel set up? Do you have merch yet? And she's like, merch. I go, oh yes, you gotta have merch. You do gotta have it. Here's why, because if you're doing something cool and somebody thinks you're doing something cool, they want to support you. I mean, that's that's the new culture, right? I mean, that's when you follow people, you follow them because you dig them. It, it, it's not even rocket science. It, it's okay to support people you like. It's okay to be supported by people who, who like you. That took me a while to get comfortable with. It was kind of not my style. But I like doing this, and it is a lot of work, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm getting merch, comfortable with it. You are talking about your hat. And I always forget to bring this up. The hat, everybody wanted this hat since yeah, the beginning dude, of my up? live streams. So, God, when did I start those? It was like early 2021 during COVID and the furlough and stuff. But, yeah, I finally found a way. It's going to happen. Uh, Patreon supporters will get access to it first. So I'm working on this, too. And then I'm going to redesign all my merch because uh, it's real, It's due for an overhaul. But, yeah, she's got to get set up on everything. Like, we learn. Yeah. We but had the, I want the my classic hat on the too. one night. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He knew what to do from the beginning. <laughs> he does. Lessons learned. Um, <clears throat> but uh, more importantly, at the end of the day, you got to have the content. You got to, um, you know, be doing some people dig. So l let's let's use that as a segue back into you. Um, I want to know the before the channel 90 second mycology. I, yeah, I, so I know you're from Cleveland. I know you live in Florida now. But but the Myco story, I don't know. So I want to hear it. 216. Yeah, so I was born and raised in Cleveland. And once I hit my late teens, like 17, 18, 19, um, I remember just becoming so interested in psychedelics. Like I smoked weed way before I even had my first beer. So that was kind of like the gateway just into like <laughs> psychedelics. And um, I brought this up before um i used i used the halo games as like a timeline in my head because i played a lot of halo <laughs> when i was younger okay so i think it was like it was 2014 2015 where i bit the bullet and i'm like you know you can't just you can't just lay acid in your kitchen but you can grow mushrooms and wheat so i came across those old roger rabbit mark r keith videos the low quality versions on youtube uh, where you do the PF tech with no pressure cooker. And at that time, I went through the whole process, but no shotgun fruiting chamber. You just do the classic um, in vitro with a Ziploc bag on top. Mm -hmm. And that was like the first ever flush back then. I was like, holy shit, I did it. Oh my God, it's not even that hard to grow mushrooms. You know, the whole stigma of, oh, cow patties and manure. No, it was brown rice and vermiculite in a jar. And of course, the spores came from spore works. That's the OG for everybody. And then ever since then, so I kind of took a break because I eventually I got my CDL. I'm a commercial driver for those who don't know. 
uh, a local driver. I don't drive over the road. So from 2014 on, I kind of just focused on work and, and saving up money to eventually move to Florida. And then I mentioned this in the, the live stream, the solo live stream I did about the history of indoor magic mushroom cultivation. Um, for some reason, Uncle Ben Tech just blew up on the internet, on, on Reddit. You had the one guy, I go, into, I go into all the history, the detail of it. The one guy posted it, and then Shroom Scout, the guy who created the Uncle Ben subreddit, ran with it even further, did all the test runs, came up with the whole guide. And I saw that, and I'm like, this is really cool. Let me try it. And sure enough, it worked so easily. There was no there was no boiling brown rice flour in a jar. There was no steaming anything. You had, uh, back then, at the time, the 90-second rice was just under a dollar or, like, a little over a dollar. So, like, let's say a dollar twenty-five, like it is now, at Dollar Tree, sterilized grain ready to use. And I was in the kitchen one day, and I looked, I looked at the rice bag, and I just went, oh my God, this this is it, 90 second mycology. I looked at that 90 microwave icon. I'm like, that's it. And it's always it's always been a hobby of also filming, editing videos, doing animations. Some of my older videos, when I had time, because I was furloughed from work, um, I hand drew a lot of animations for my videos. So it's all came together of, oh my God, I should turn this into a YouTube channel. And it really only took off because I reached out to Shroom Scout. Actually, no, he reached out to me first because I was I was always replying to people's posts and giving people correct information from the start. I was just so interested in the idea. He reached out and he's like, hey, you want to be a moderator for the subreddit? And then I started the channel, the whole process. And then he let me post the videos there as visual guides. And Reddit kind of helped it take off. And from there, people just love the whole vibe of 90 Second Mycology. There's a lot of people that don't know anything about it. And they come across my two hour long videos and they go, this is not 90 seconds long. And soon <laughs> enough, they, they understand it's all about the 90 second rice. So I know we'll get into it even further, but that is my history. I'm a commercial driver, local. And so this content creation and stuff is still just a hobby. That's why it takes me a long time to... You know, I pop on lives and I'll still upload videos. Right now, it's just a bunch of short videos I've been doing in between full projects. So I still work full time. Like you said, Monday now, there's a guy at my place who quit and I'm the guy floating to fill in. Oh, yeah. So now I'm off Monday, Tuesdays, which I'm going to bring up the Michael Game Show, which, I, you know, everyone here probably knows about now. We're shooting, oh, yeah. for, Ju we're shooting for July 11th. But the problem is... Tuesday night could be my new Sunday night, which means I got to get to bed to get up at, you know, four in the morning. So we're still working on that. I might go back to Tuesday, Wednesday off. That's why Tuesday nights were my Saturday. It's a whole thing. You know, when you have a, a bid schedule and a union job, you don't have a regular weekend. Your weekend is just whenever your two days off are. So it's just yeah. a whole thing. It is. I mean, life is a whole thing. It's complicated. They did not tell me how, you know, when I was young, geeky, you know, getting all A's, thinking he was just going to own life. And then life goes, hold on a second, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Life's fun. Life's challenging and interesting. It's just, it comes at you so fast too. So it does. once if you sign up for my Patreon wait list and you get notified right away when it's live, I'm also planning to do a solo live stream to kind of go over everything with a bunch of other huge announcements that I got going on. It's just one thing after another that it happens so fast. And it's like, it's just great. And, you know, right. I feel great for the guys who, you know, PGT and everybody else who can do this stuff full time. I would love to do that. But, you know, since I'm a class A commercial driver, I've got great benefits. You know, I have a weekly set paycheck. I'm with you. You know, I, and I, need, I got the night. kids. I need the benefits. You know, yeah. I clock in, make deliveries, clock out. And then at the end of the week, I have a set check. When you're in content creation, your check could be more or less than what it usually is. So right. the content creation is a little bit of a bump, which is great. No problem with that. You know, I'm going to finally get everything settled with that. 90 Second Mycology has definitely become a brand, and I'm never going to let that go. And people have come you to can't. love me as 90. Which, if people don't know, by the way, 
I brought this up before. It's not a secret. My real name is Frank. So I didn't know that, 90, Frank. I will. Uh, okay. People want to call me 90. People want to call me Frank. Um, that's also how I got my Reddit username. People might know me lit logistics. It's just because I'm a driver, you know, and I was, nice. I was, you know, I'm lit all the time in a good way. I don't <laughs> drive lit. I don't do that. So, you know what I'm trying to say? I was like, that's, that's wait some a of the minute. History. No, that's nice. some of the history. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, my name is Frank. So, um, it'd be great to come out, you know, like I feel it's awesome. Like Ashley Boomer Shroomer, Fresh Cap Tony, people who can just come out with their face. If I did this full time, I'd have no problem just being out there like, yo, it's right. me, Frank. It's 90. Um, but with what I do right now, this is yeah. this is its own thing. I, you know, I'm up in costume every night. So who knows? Even if I showed my real face, people would miss this, the mask. and everything. Oh, you can't like, lose the bow tie, though. No, I would you never. Can't. This is signature now. Yes. And if anybody, you know, I, I've been thinking some orange on the hat, but I don't think it would fit. It Man, I want I want that hat. I want that right there, just like that. The OG 90 second hat. You could definitely do a tricked out, you know, fresh, you know, new hat. And but but I want the old classic for sure. It's trucker style. So I got yes. the mesh in the back for when I'm getting sweaty in the cab of the truck. Yes. <laughs> no, this is the style that's coming out. Same brand, same manufacturer and everything. Black and white. Uh, this will be available eventually soon. Nice. And just, you know, like you said, a lot of work. A lot of work that people want to get into it. You got to. It's a lot of work. Yes. You got to do it. I you never do don't it. have a list of things I didn't attend to for the day. Yes, it's true. Uh, okay. So, so that's cool. I, I love, uh, you, you know, uh, hearing the origin story and kind of how you got into things. Um, and I definitely appreciate, I think you serve. You're, you're doing a noble thing because instead of being like everybody else who tries a tech and moves on, you're going, I want to kind of be the ambassador for this tech. This is, you know, a legitimate tech. It helps a lot of people out. So, um, you, you're, you're definitely doing a service, your content, you know, your subscribership and all that, uh, it clearly proves that, that it's valuable uh compelling content for a lot of people it's helping a lot of people grow so how about you do this i, I want you to sell everybody because i have never done uncle ben's tech oh yeah there i i went straight for it i had this thing in in a matter of two months i i just that's that's my style i go straight to what's the most complicated difficult fucking way to do a something lot of that's do the that. way i do it so Tell me about Uncle Ben's. I, I want to hear how it works, tricks of the trade, things to do, things not to do, what to expect as far as success and failure. Um, and uh, just get, give people watching who maybe have literally never grown and thought, ah, I don't know, I got to buy a bunch of stuff. Yeah, they're still searching. They're lurking. Yes. You know, they're just here. They're like, hey, you know, what are these guys these size talking about mushrooms tonight? You know, what's that yes. all about? Preach. So, right here, we got Overjoyed, who said, 90, you created some of the most comprehensive videos and helped me so much early on. If not for Uncle Ben Tech, I would not be here now. Uncle Ben equals low barrier to entry. Exactly. Now, that's what um, that's what immediately filled my brain when it kind of blew up. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Brown Rice is an awesome grain spawn. And I go over the history of Brown Rice in that live stream I mentioned earlier in my live stream playlist on my channel it produces some pretty potent cubensis mushrooms and there it is on the shelf right now i'm a spokesperson for the savvy fair dollar 25 tree rice because right now it's a dollar 25 it's the right. cheapest out there even aldi went up in price aldi's like a dollar 20 or or no dollar 30 30 something now because aldi used to be the best one it was like a dollar 19 so you're walking into the grocery store and you've already got grain bags there that are ready to go fully sterilized and there's nothing against the vendors because I have a lot of affiliates on my website who sell sterilized grains in bulk quantities. And when you sell grains like that, shipping can get expensive. Some of them will offer free shipping. Um, but here's the thing is you're going to spend a dollar twenty five on a bag of rice with a good spore syringe from another one of my affiliates. And that's going to be your test hit or miss. Well, now I'm out a dollar twenty five if I didn't do it right. And you still have at least, you know, 
9.5 cc's of spore solution left. Whereas if you spent $25 on a vendor grain bag, you know, rye, millet, sorghum and millet are big right now, bird seed, then you just lost all that money on a, on a grain bag because you did something wrong as your first time and you failed on it. So and, there is that. That is, I yeah, think that's, that's an important point is when you're learning, you're going to screw up, you're going to make mistakes, Right. make mistakes on a smaller scale, get, exactly. get some of the basics down. So there, so, I mean- a dollar that's, fifty or less that it, that's you know, what no one's going to cry. Then you've got people like you said, so they still want to get into it, but they'll right. jump in and they'll they'll go through my Amazon supply list and they'll buy like six six cases of Uncle Ben's rice and that's like <laughs> what twelve bags each, and they go, "Yo, I inoculated sixty five right. bags tonight," and it's like, <laughs> "Come on, man, just do like a couple at a time for your uh, first time." If you're going to go that crazy, then. That's you know, that enthusiasm, dude. That's the enthusiasm. You, you know, got to love it. Against it. I'm pretty humble. So I tell people right away, like, it's easy to mess up. Um, a lot of people now are saying the Uncle Ben brand is, is a little wet, more wet than usual. But honestly, lately, I haven't been having problems. I've been doing the whole punch gas exchange method for people who are familiar with the technique. Uh, two hole punches through the packaging. So that's like four holes, technically. Uh, paper tape good to go even with a spore syringe because people go oh this guy's using lc that's why it's worked so well but no i i stick to spores and the 90 second rice especially for the brand for beginners because part of it is like i enjoy teaching people how easy it really is and for some people this becomes like their medicine and i right. get so many messages of people like randy oh my god you changed my life now i can do this and i can do that thanks to you and i mentioned to you backstage earlier I saw the Reddit post of somebody in the Uncle Ben subreddit who started with Uncle Ben, and now they've just simply moved on to giving their grains a steam bath. So they're still prepping their own grains, no pressure cooker style, like I have videos on my channel about. So that's their stepping stone. And really, like Uncle Ben can be the gateway for people. And so, like we mentioned also earlier backstage, is people ask me all the time, like, Yo, 90, why haven't you moved on from Uncle Ben? Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, dude, look at my name. 90 second mycology. I'm not just going to move right. on and teach people something completely different. I have an advanced cultivation playlist for people who want to learn how to use pressure cookers, unicorn bags, because it has its place. But 90 as a brand is all about pre-sterilized 90 second rice right there in the grocery store aisle. And little do they know you're buying 10 bags of rice, isopropyl alcohol, a shoe box and they're just right. they don't they don't care what you're doing with that they just go man you really like this brown rice and just say yeah i love meal prep and it makes it a million times easier i think it's funny that someone assumed that the person at the dollar store had enough care and concern to actually ask you what you were going to do with all the there's things people i have never people... dude i show up with two of the little you know, hand baskets full of isopropyl for at the dollar store. I have never had them once go, what do you do with all this? Never. Then I get my stuff online mostly, but before COVID it was questionable. Like what are you doing with all this ISO? But now it kind of, you kind of blend in and there's just people that want to make small talk. Like, wow, you really like this true. rice, don't you? And I'm like, it's so simple and easy. And yep, then, I bought um, you out. Oh, it happens too because say I run out of the loose cocoa coir I like to use, Eco Earth loose uh, reptile substrate. Mm -hmm. I'll have to run to the pet store and get some. And they're like, oh, what kind of reptile do you have? And depending on what mood I'm in, I'll just say, no, I use it to grow mushrooms and then just leave it at that. And they go, what? Oh, tell me more. Like, no, I got to go. Bye. Sorry. I like that. Mysterious. And then you yeah. come back the next time and they go, hey, mushroom guy, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I have to start printing out my business cards with the QR code. Hey, check me out on YouTube. There you go. Yeah, I think this day and age, uh, man, I at the place I get grain from, uh, I've been doing popcorn lately, but the, the feed store I used to get grain from, uh, they would ask me, oh, is this for chickens? And I'd go, no, grown yeah, mushrooms. Yeah, that too. Just grown mushrooms. Yep. You say grown like, mushrooms. Damn. If they say what kind, guys, it's your choice. You can tell them the truth or you can lie. Lion's it doesn't man, that's matter. That's popular. Lion's mane is blowing up right now yeah i mean there's so many mushrooms 
my uh, mother-in-law finally figured out I'm growing mushrooms, and she's like, oh, what do you grow? Oh, oh we were down um, at, at this funeral, and one of the other people, oh. she brought it up. Oh, yeah, Geeky grows, uh, you know, mushrooms. And, and the first thing out of this, uh, you know, distant cousin's mouth is, oh, what kind of mushrooms? Medicinal? And I was like, yeah, all kinds. Yeah, I've grown everything. And just leave it at that. I mean, it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be too complicated. Um, there's people, well, we bring it up a lot. So like there's two types of people just like smokers. If you say, Hey, do you smoke? There's people that say no, or they go smoke what? So people who know about mushrooms, they go, you know, Oh, what kind of mushrooms? And they'll know right away. You know, what do you, what kind of mushrooms? Tell me when the good ones are ready. That's, that's your, that's your hint. Oh yeah. At work. Uh, one of my triage questions is, you know, uh, do you smoke? And, uh, I had to change it to, do you smoke cigarettes? Because right. they used to go, uh, yeah. And then I'd say, how many packs a day? And they go, oh, no, I smoke weed. Oh, okay. Right. Well, let's read. Okay. Do you smoke cigarettes? Anyway. Tobacco. All right. Before we go on, uh, guys, if you haven't uh, clicked that like button, click it, smash it, tickle it, touch it. I don't care. But if you're still here Inoculate listening. It inoculate it inoculate the like button guys there we go i i I would appreciate that um and then real quick just uh quick shout out uh michael bones late for dinner chiron labs beaker mycology simplified uh project Myco. uh all uh gave me some uh little financial super sticker support tonight so i really appreciate you guys mycology uh simplified um is one of my buddies from way back and he uh is now just one of the rock solid uh micro supply vendors out there so if, if you guys are ever uh considering anybody uh he's worth checking out and seeing what he's got um so anyway sorry yeah smash the like and, and now back to uh uncle ben's so so if i'm a let's say i'm 18 I, I'm i'm like frank when he was young right he doesn't want to drink Bud Light. He's seen his dad. He wasn't doesn't want to turn out like that. He wants, you know, he wants some some mushrooms. So he turns 18. He says, I'm going to do this. He goes, Uncle Ben's. Or if you are just, you know, like me three years ago, didn't grow mushrooms, never thought about growing mushrooms, and then read an article that says, People are using magic mushrooms to, you know, treat these mental health issues and, and, and problems and you want to give it a go. I mean, that's not a bad first choice. You know, PF Tech is often regarded as a great first step. I think maybe Uncle Ben's is the first first step. That might be my, my first gateway too. That's the gateway. In my opinion, people should start with the brown rice. Um, you know, sure, it's so much easier to buy a grain bag with a filter patch, you know, for $20, and then you shoot the whole spore syringe into it, and then the spores just don't take off because it's stupid rye berries or tractor supply oats that, you right. know, they didn't prepare right. But, no, luckily, yep. I, my parents never drank alcohol. I didn't grow up around alcohol. It was so weird. Like, it was just like a little hippie family. And I'm lucky for that. Until I got my CDL, then I drank a little more because drivers, unfortunately, we get randomly tested federally, but they don't test for mushrooms or other psychedelics. Yep. So it doesn't mean I'm doing them. Yep. At, uh, uh, literally uh, at work, I, <laughs> one day I was, well, we were talking to this uh, med student who was, you, you know, we're talking about psychedelics and, and using it because he wanted to be a psychiatrist and uh, was talking with one of the other docs. And I was like, can you let's go on the computer let's see if you can possibly order a test for psilocybin and she was like okay so she's all like looking and everything she's like nope i I couldn't even order it if i wanted to and and, and they do the same for um uh oh we lost 90. they do the same for uh they will random drug test people um at work uh uh, they love to do it after you go on vacation um you know, for marijuana usually, but, uh, yeah, no, no psilocybin that, that, that's a very expensive, very problematic test. So same with hair testing. There's, there's a lot of over the road trucking companies that will test your hair because they've got the money for it. Otherwise standard DOT urine test, basic five trucks, 
weed is just the number one. It's weed, cocaine, PCP, cocaine. Yeah. Oh, I already said cocaine. Opiates <laughs> and amphetamines. Basic cocaine. five. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I mean, but, I mean, realistically, I, I don't know, man. I feel like, is anyone just tripping balls and going to work? I don't think. Well, yeah, that's right here. Really so a concern. <laughs> you just said that we've got Thai guy grows high. Said I carry fake pee in my armpit at work. Yeah. Man, I don't have the balls to do that. I'd be too nervous if I got pulled for a random. Then I've got expired quick fix somewhere, and it's just, you know, just it's just better to just can't just don't do it. Don't smoke. I wish I could, but yeah. Hey, I don't know, man. I've uh, lately, if if you're hitting a one hitter and and it puts you in a good mood, I'm probably not even mad at you to be honest. Um, yeah, uh, that's all yeah. it is. When you drive a truck, you can go off duty and slam a 24 pack and almost kill yourself from alcohol poisoning. Yeah. And be good to go if you drank, you know, within eight or 12 hours before your next shift. But right. you clock out and it's a hit, do the one hitter, and it's in your system like 25 days later on a random. Oh, you lose your right. job and yeah. your license, and it's just not worth it. I agree. I mean, it does pose, I, one of the doctors I'm friends with, we are not politically aligned at all, but we get in some good, interesting conversations and it is a fair thing. I mean, if you're just completely blasted on marijuana, it obviously does impair your driving ability to some degree. So, but how do you test for that? I don't know. It's, it, it's pretty Yeah, they're trying to come out with like weed breathalyzers and stuff. And you want to know what, 90, at the end of the day, it's not going to matter because in the next five to 10 years, all the cars are going to drive us any, everywhere anyway. Right. Same it's not going to matter. All yeah. the shit's oh, going to yeah. get delivered. It's just going to teleport. Yeah. It is. It's just going to pop up. Yeah. It's like this, uh, there was a Netflix special, some Asian uh, stand-up comic. I forget this guy's name, but he's ridiculously funny. He was like uh, talking about people with, with their Amazon Primes and, you know, like, He's like, they don't want, they don't want next day prime. They want prime now, like right now. I want to think about it and I want it to just fall from the sky in my hand. And I'm like, bro, it's going to happen. It's going to be real close they, to that real they, soon. They started those drone deliveries somewhere. And then that like kind of, yeah. where's, you know, I didn't hear any more about it. Oh, I'm, I mean, that's going to be the drones, the robotics, the self-driving cars, self-driving trucks. That's all, I mean. That's all happening. Absolutely happening. Anyway, okay, sorry. We got yeah. on a total tangent there about uh, uh about the drugs. The we all drugs, love drugs and 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 logistics and all that good stuff. That's right. Um so so I'm going to I go by, I go to the store. Um by the way, uh I brought brought back I got my wife got me a new uh Hawaiian t-shirt, guys, or Hawaiian shirt. Ha had to rep it tonight. Feeling very summery out here in northeastern Ohio. <laughs> Not quite as summery as Birmingham, Alabama, but but pretty close. Anyway, um, so I go buy a bag of uh, Uncle Ben's, and you know it's ready to go because if I'm going to eat it for rice, all I do is microwave it, and it's good, so it's hydrated. But it's oh, here's not... the thing. I got to go. cut you off right there because do it. Everybody always asks. The number one question has become like a meme in the 90 community is like, do we have to cook the rice? There's people that legitimately have that question. Do we you have to cook right? the rice? It's called ready rice because yeah. you can literally, it's ready to eat and inoculate off the store shelf. The 90 seconds is to just warm it up so you're not eating cold rice. You know? Yeah. So the rice is pre-cooked, ready rice, and good to go. In it's the hydrated, bag. sterile, just like any other canned or packaged food. That's the good part about it. It's ready to go. Mm-hmm. And then there's people, you know, there's the real stoners out there who, who buy the dried packs of rice and legitimately try to inoculate it thinking, oh, this was the right one, right? And right. it turns out, oh, you know, I was high as hell. I didn't realize it. Ha ha. But it's true. People, you know, you don't have to cook the rice unless you're sticking with the video I uploaded called the Lazy Boy Tech, where I show you how to turn your brown rice dry brown rice just no no soak no simmer no pressure cooker brown rice prep right into the jar with water steam bathe it steam bathe it and then it's good to go once it cools off now when you do no soak no simmer grains as i'm talking about it the the hot shake when the cycle's done is the key part with every grain everyone's going to tell you that 
You can't just let it sit or bottom's okay. going to be mush. Top's going to be dry. It's not going to work. Yeah. Okay. So but, now uh, I got a question. Yeah. So, okay. So we're, we don't have to cook it. It's fully hydrated. It's sterilized. I mean, the assumption is, is it's essentially sterilized. Um, my guess, you, you can tell me your thoughts on this. So, so let's say I knock up uh, 10 bags uh, I got an LC syringe. What am I using? Half a CC, one CC? What are you using? Yeah, so here's the thing. Even if it's a good LC syringe, you don't want to throw off the moisture content of your grains right. too much. So I always say to shoot for half of a CC on that little yeah. needle. You know, up to one CC. I've done one CC of spore solution. And it's been okay. If you go over that, you can end up with too much moisture pooling at the bottom of the rice bags. And then that'll take over before the mycelium can actually take over. So just stick with 0.5 to 0.75 up to one cc. You'll see people that go, oh, I okay. squirted five cc's. I was fine. Okay, that's good. I wouldn't Seems a suggest lot. that. Yeah. Even it, with it, a good liquid culture syringe. Yeah. Yeah, I, I find it's better. Um, you really, even when you're doing regular quart jars, I just knocked a bunch up and uh, most of them I got it all right, but my goal is always to get it so that it drips down the side and doesn't quite make it to the bottom. And I had one I just didn't quite get my pressure right, and I, I had a little pool at the bottom, so I shook that one up. But um, uh, So that uh, using that logic, I was thinking, yeah, you if these are fully hydrated grain, which they're, they're not like 60% hydrated, that's fully hydrated rice, you probably want to err on the side of using a little bit too yeah, little rather than too much. You know, don't get us wrong. Like right here, White, White Beard in the chat said, I use 3.5 cc for a quart. Yeah, the more the more culture, the more inoculum you use, you're going to have faster colonization. But with fully hydrated grains, I mean, really the best inoculation method would be clean agar slices because you're not right. adding any extra moisture. And you're not throwing off the moisture content. And and people ask me that as well all the time is, do you have a, an agar to 90 video? I do. I have agar inoculation to 90 second rice, grain to grain, spore, LC, whatever you can think of is on the YouTube channel right now. Luckily, those Oh, are see, safe. I assumed you just stabbed it, squirt a little bit in, move on. So you also will cut the top and drop in some agar Oh, yeah, slices. I do it all. Oh, I do... Okay. Um, Corner what do you cut, find is the best way to do it? The best way to do it is liquid culture syringe right at the view window. Okay. You know, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.75. Um, I stick with the view window only because I'm a content creator and people want to see the mycelium right away. Right. You can shoot for the middle. You can go for the top. I do the bottom. Once the bottom is fully colonized, that's when I do my little break and shake. You break up that brick and right. kind of try to spread it around the bag. And a lot of people will do that and they don't achieve full colonization. They can feel the rice at the top when they shake it up. Mm -hmm. It That just means you didn't break it and shake it well enough. You didn't mix that crap up in there well enough. Right. So I like to start at the view window just to be able to show it right away. And then once that's good to go, we're all white, mix it up. Yep. Other yeah, than that, and... if I, you know, well, I was going to say, if I do have agar slices and I don't feel like cooking grain, even my lazy boy tech, I'm too lazy to do lazy boy. <laughs> I'll put agar in 90 rice. Lazy, lazy it boy. Yeah. Never works. And, and yeah, I mean, white never, beard was, uh, wrong. white beard was talking about three and a half, um, CCs per quart. That's, uh, that's about where I'm at three to four. Um, but for uncle Ben's, you're saying, uh, what a half is probably your ideal. Yeah. Because they're already, so this rice is obviously so human consumption. Right. So oh, where'd you go? Okay, with there a standard and whatever watt microwave, it's going to help steam the rice. So it's a little bit more plump for you to eat. Right. So, um, it's it's already got a lot of moisture in it. And oh, we're having a little technical it's difficulties. A lot of there, there you go. Oh wait, you got it. Did you hear me? Did we lose audio? Yeah, we we just had like a delay for a second. We still do a little bit people? here. We so we'll we'll see check, how long check, check. that lasts. Check check. Am I here? I th okay. You check. you look live again. Check. check. Can you hear me though? Yep. Yeah, you're great. Okay. I don't know if anybody missed what I said. Yeah, do that again. 
Oh, now we lost you again. I lost you now. You lost me. I'm still here. You're frozen. Oh, now you're back. Technical difficulties. Oh, see, guys. Now you now you guys see. Do it live. May, maybe the live, right? There are pluses and minuses to, to both. Do it live. We're doing it live. Um, and we're enjoying all the fringe benefits that come with doing it live. Customer service <clears throat> said, please start a minute back. Um, I already... I'm not... Oh. No, no, you're back. You're not frozen. Great. All right, here we go. 90 second rice is wet so that when you microwave it, it steams itself and it's nice and plump to consume. So you don't want to add too much extra moisture. Right. The generic brands like Dollar Tree, Dollar 25 Tree tend to be a little bit less wet, you know, um, a little bit cheaper. So your your rice can turn out a little more hard if you're going to eat it. But that's great for us. Honestly, I think they've caught on. Like, hey, we're going to make this a little less wet, set a little cheaper, and we're going to sell millions of it because of this guy 90. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not going to sponsor him. No, I, I should reach out. So Savvy Fair at Dollar Twenty Five Tree comes from some manufacturer named like Baxter's North America. Mm -hmm. So I should reach out to them, have them produce something with the 90 label on it already, and I'll buy 20 pallets of it and go pick it up in a truck. But since I can just haul it myself, save money. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Customer service said, perfect. Perfecto. Thank you. I think that's what I was talking about. <laughs> um, well, sorry about the technical difficulties, but you know what? This is a great opportunity for guys go ahead and smash that like button. Um, yeah, you, know. you know, YouTube doesn't care about the sub subscribers. They, they care about the likes. So um, if we got 153 people watching, we should have 153 likes. That's, that's, that's an ideal world, ideal situation. Everybody send a dollar, $153, $1 each. That would be fantastic. That um, supports <clears throat> Michael Geeky for a long time that supports me that makes many things happen yes um so if you guys are just tuning in uh we got 90 second mycology here tonight we're talking about uh low low tech options for getting going into mushroom cultivation and so we've been talking about uncle ben's tech that means buying the the pre-cooked uncle ben's rice in the little bags about a buck 50 depending upon where brown you rice. go brown rice um yes definitely brown rice and uh you use that as your sterilized grain to inoculate with ideally a half to maybe close to one cc of liquid culture. Um, or a spore solution. Or a spore solution. Yeah, now, you... uh, which do you feel, I mean, really spore solution? I feel like many things could go wrong with that. What What's your well, experience as far as success with the multi-spore? So the, the thing is, um, a lot of beginners who get into it, they're not really going to know the difference between LC or spore solution. Right. So a lot of people are going to stumble upon the spore syringe first. So that's why I try to stick with spores as much as I can. And there's no issues as long as you stick with a clean, reputable vendor, which I have right. a whole list on my website. Go to 90secondmycology.com slash links. And the good part is the major, the number one affiliate is Inoculate the World. And luckily for everybody, they sell liquid culture. It's under the name of an isolated tube. So okay. you can skip spores if you really want to with Inoculate the World and get the liquid culture. But the, the videos I've been making or the videos I've uploaded about these golden teachers and stuff, that was a spore syringe from Inoculate the World. I forgot about them in the closet and they fruited just fine. And, and although I didn't inoculate the brown rice with, with the latest video, um, I, up, I did a live stream harvest from the microwave tech that I filmed for Patreon, which was multi-spore golden teacher to a 90 second rice bag, went through the whole fruiting process and everything. So my experience is if you've got a bad syringe, there's a lot of like crappy Reddit vendors who literally just sell toilet water with black flakes in it and say, oh yeah, you know, it's it's whatever some crazy strain, albino penis envy, because a noob isn't going to know any difference. Sadly, they don't. Yeah, unfortunately. And they get the fecal flake syringes. Yeah. You yeah. don't want fecal flakes. You don't. 
You think you uh, do. But as long as you, you, you got a clean source, then you've got nothing to worry about, whether it's spores or liquid culture. I prefer LC, just like the next guy or girl or they or them. Um, but Nicely, spores, nicely nothing, done, 90. You are a man nothing, of the times. Nothing wrong with them because a lot of noobs are going to start with spores and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, if you get a spore print, there's I'm working on a tech with that as well with the brown rice. That's going to be on Patreon eventually. Um, but people have literally just cut the corner and scraped the spore print into the rice bag and it's worked. It, you know, people will say it's so dirty, hey. spore print's dirty. If it worked, you know, they, it worked for them. They're not lying about it. Well, whole, whole now you say on. that, but that's not always the opinion of people on YouTube or, or on uh, Facebook. People can oh, go, they, here, they, I did yeah, a I'm thing. Sure. Here's photos yeah. of proof. And they still go, nope, I don't believe you. Okay. Yep. What are you There's do? people that will hate on what I do, even though there's millions of people on Reddit that show their success on how well it works. And they go, well, you just got lucky. You just got lucky. Yep. It's not going to happen again. Then it happens again and again. And they go, right. Oh, whatever. You're just keeping getting lucky. Yeah. There's no excuse anymore. Agreed. Uh, proof's in the pudding. And uh, I remember when I first got going, I built a still airbox and I, within maybe three days said, yep, I hate this thing. Um, hey, if you, if you like still airboxes, I am happy for you. I'm not telling you to not use them. For me personally, I could... It, it just sucked all the joy out of the process for me. And I said, there's got to be a better way. And I found a video on YouTube uh, by uh, Veritas Mycology. And he just took a little desktop uh, air purifier, went and bought an actual HEPA filter for it, taped a garment bag onto it, you know, like you get at the dry cleaners. And uh, he said that you basically make in a positive pressure room for, you know, doing your sterile agar work. So I went and bought one and built it and... It worked flawlessly. I probably, before I got this flow, I got lucky, the flow hood, I got off eBay for like 280 bucks shipped to my door. I just had to, you know, it was wired for 240, uh, 240 volts. And uh, when, uh, so while I was using a garment bag tech, I probably did well over a thousand transfers and I had zero contamination. So I got the flow hood and as a, like a, a nice goodbye to that tech that, that worked for me so well. Um, I did a little post on, on YouTube or on Facebook saying, so here's this tech I used, you know, I don't think a lot of people know about it. I haven't heard about it a lot, so I'm going to kind of advertise it. And immediately just multiple people, it doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work. And I'm just like, are you guys fucking dense? I just said it fucking worked. They don't want to hear it because it's not what they did. Like instead of you saying it didn't, it doesn't work. Say, how did you make it work? That's how you learn. Right. But no, they don't want to do that. So anyway, I'm like, okay, whatever, dude, <laughs> like, I can't. Well, you it's can't all about fix. low tech tonight. Cause I use this. I fans of 90. No, I literally just take a tub and flip it over and just hang it off the edge of my counter and reach up. You have to sit below it. But I reach up inside of it and do my work like little T-Rex arms. That's all I need personally. And it's low tech. Right. And people who have figured it out love it. They go, yeah, I sit below it just like I say. And you can reach up in there and do your work. There's people that try to like sit above it. And that's, of course, it's not going to work. Then they get all upset. Right. Oh, it doesn't work. Don't do it. But it works just fine. It didn't and work for me. So it doesn't work for anyone. Right. And just right. like you and the Facebook and the, and, the, and the flow hood tech, it's like, no, no, you're lying. So, yeah, it's all about low tech for me. Nope. I have a pressure cooker, obviously. I mentioned the advanced cultivation playlist I have. So personal projects, I'll still pressure cook stuff. And Miss 90, she hates the smell of oats and bird seed. Yeah. And so do I. It just fills Miss the Geeky air. Miss Geeky also smells, hates those it smells. It smells like yeah. shit. <laughs> Popcorn's great. Every time I cook popcorn, uh, they end up having movie night and they just pop their own microwave popcorn so it inspires yeah. good good things the popcorn does yeah, um, yeah. but yeah Walmart the, bird the... seed under pressure smells like shit yeah. <laughs> um okay so half cc you can also cut it open now obviously if you're cutting it open you're you know running a little increased risk of contamination i have to assume now how once you cut it open 
and drop in an agar chunk, how are you sealing it? Are you just folding it and like using a clip or what are you doing? Yeah, so it's um, what we do with the 90 second rice, paper tape is an essential supply. Um, I have a supply store at 90secondmycology.com slash supplies. Yep. It's just an Amazon store front. Just Well, it's not, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm an Amazon associate. Yeah, it's affiliate. like the affiliate to, yeah, just yeah. an affiliate. Yeah. Everything you need, and I use the same supplies. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been listing them there. So it's paper tape. What I'll do is, you know what? Why don't I go get a bag of 90-second rice real quick? Um, I don't have okay, any Okay, guys, ready. special guest I'll appearance. Right live right and back. in you person, get... an actual bag of Uncle Ben's rice. Yeah. Stay Let tuned. Me, uh, Hold on. I'll be right back. Cool, man. All right, guys. Well, while he's doing that, I'm I'm gonna pull him off, and we're gonna take a minute to we're gonna revisit my mission statement in case you guys forgot what we're all about here. Educate and inspire mushroom cultivators and enthusiasts on the art and science of mushroom cultivation, while delving into the medicinal, therapeutic, and societal aspects of mushrooms, including discussions on integration therapy, spirituality, and the decriminalization movement. And uh, I've talked to a few people who have been, uh, they just went to the MAPS, MAPS conference. I'm going to have them on here in the next couple of weeks to talk about how exciting and fun that was and, and what their big takeaway was from that. We're also going to be doing more and more about the decriminalization movement, uh, figure out how we can organize and get people together to uh, sort of work together to make those efforts happen in more places. So, you know, we're, we're getting, we're broadening the, the scope here, not, not just growing mushrooms, although that's always going to be the favorite. Don't forget, uh, in just a little bit, we're going to have Shay of Microdex Mushrooms, uh, back on the show and he's going to be doing some, he's in the kitchen ready to go. I'm seeing him off in the green room right now. He, he's ready to rock and roll. We're, we're going to, um, we're going to see, speaking of, of low tech, uh, we're going to do oven tech. It's, it's pretty much a flawless tech from my understanding and in the logic of how I understand it. Um, I, I think there's a lot of people who should be considering this tech. Um, so we're going to get to see it anyway. Uh, but without further ado, let's bring back 90 and his special guest. I'm back. All right. So you are back. Um, I had, to, I had to make sure I found the right one for this occasion. I have, for, for some show and tell here yes um a vintage september 2020 uncle ben's bright orange bag expires september of oh 2020. you brought out the old hot shit dude oh, i've got two of these gosh. they're collector's items now you can't <laughs> find this anywhere else but the 92nd mycology kitchen maybe that's eBay. amazing um expiration date is is right here um no mold still sealed good to go Looking good uh, but anyway, so what I was saying was the first step that I do is you always just get the rice pushed down, just like to the Ready Rice logo on these bags. Like this okay. is really all you need up here. Like what, two, three inches for gas exchange up here. Okay. And what I do for an agar inoculation is I do a corner cut. You just cut oh, the corner. Okay. And it's enough to kind of squeeze the bag, make like a little teapot spout. And then you just cut your agar wedges to fit in the in the slit that you made. And then what I do is have the paper tape ready as well, just like pieces on the side. And then um, if people don't know, I also made a 60 second pasta tech with pasta that comes like this that you microwave. And I taught you how to tape the corner so that you do not end up sealing the bag because you can easily cut the corner, paper tape it and actually accidentally end up sealing it. So that's why oh. I've moved on to a hole punch. But with agar, you can't get around that. You still need to cut the bag and drop a slice in there. So the paper tape goes on the packaging and you kind of seal it under the slit, but just don't crimp the top of the tape. It's hard to explain without having a cut corner. But if you want to see what I'm talking about, go find my pasta tech video. And the paper tape, just don't crimp it and seal it against itself. And that bag, it'll be able to breathe and colonize. Um, what I like to do is let it sit. You're not going to see anything right away, obviously. Right. Let it sit until you can feel it. You'll feel the mycelium. Then I'll break it up, do the break and shake, make sure I get oh. some mycelium to the bottom and all of that. So 
I've got an Angar inoculation video as well that I mentioned, if you haven't seen it or anybody out there that's curious. Um, grain to grain works the same way. I'll have a colonized Uncle Ben bag, and that one I'll have to actually cut a bigger uh, corner slit, right. obviously, to reach in there and grab some grain. But the receiving bag, same thing, cut it like an agar inoculation and drop the colonized grain in there, paper tape the corner so it's not sealed on itself, and then that's good to go. So Nice. It's You're not just... One of the videos I'm working on for Patreon is... No agar, no flow hood, no nothing, cloning, spore print. You know, there's so many other applications for 90 second rice that people just don't realize is out there. And sure, I could give it away now, but there's no don't, fun in that. There's no, no anticipation. Don't make us wait. Make yeah, us wait. Yeah, why would I do man. that? And, you know, I'm yes. not about I'm not about to give the surprise away. So just to keep people, keep the anticipation up there. Low tech, beginner friendly. You don't always need agar for every single little thing that you're going to do. Oh, syringe right. testing, LC testing, no agar. It's all going to fall under the same video. So there's a little 90 second rice lesson for you. Nice. Cool, man. Well, I, I mean, I think I'm going to have to just do it and uh, have that experience. I, I do feel a little left out. I, I want to see what it's all about. I'm not going to lie. Every once in a while, uh, you know, I don't have grain ready to go, but I sure could just have a... a little case of 90 second rice sitting there just calling my name so i think i'm gonna give it a try i think that will be fun and and for those of you guys watching um tonight's all about low technique uh, low tech techniques um things that are not hugely expensive things that are simple and uh the the genius of uncle ben's tech is that you have because this is you know pre-cooked rice ready to eat it's fully hydrated. It's not damp or soggy, though. It's just, you know, kind of perfectly hydrated. You can inoculate that with, with a little liquid culture or multi-spore syringe. And uh, as 90s pointed out, there's even a little view window. You can kind of keep an eye on things. And uh, and if you follow his text, you know, go, go to his YouTube channel, watch his, watch his stuff. Uh, keep an eye out for his Patreon. He's going to have uh, a lot of other top secret but soon not to be so secret uh text that that you can use Keeping this for people on the edge because they want to see what the hell i've been up to yes you know with the youtube problems you know even you've had these some of these podcasts yeah. to monetize and strike that's getting so stupid that i had to just bite the bullet put my content behind a paywall you gotta because do it. people love the vibe they'll pay for 90 videos and you know you know, people can still donate directly, 90secondmycology.com slash donate, and I'm yep. still grabbing your donations as shout outs in front of all the new 90 videos coming out. Yep. So, and that and soon I'll be adding the Patreon shout or what is the patron shout outs to those as well. Perfect. Because I enjoy teaching people. I enjoy, you know, having my efforts recognized and everyone's going to have haters, but Hopefully, if it's less than 90 haters, nothing wrong with that. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I look at it as well, I got maybe five or six that, that really, you know, really seem to dislike me. I'm like, wow, I'm doing great. I got a small little faction of, of, of dissidents and everybody else seems to be digging Mike on Monday night. I'm, I'm a happy guy. It's all good. All right, dude. So, um, I, I think I'm going to have to just do it. Maybe we'll have to, you know, we'll do the little update as time goes on, see how, how geeky's doing with the 92nd uh, tech. And yeah, got to have that experience. But I for, say, I say bring on Microdex. That's our, that's another low tech guest tonight. Yep. Maybe we're about Microdex to bring him on. Also, also get some 90 second rice in that kitchen because the kitchen is where all the mycology <laughs> happens for us. Low yeah. tech. There's the lab. The kitchen is the lab when you're low tech and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, I still don't cook down here. I've been thinking about getting some, you know, uh, I I induction burners, but for the, I, I still do a lot of that work upstairs in my kitchen as well. Um, so yeah, let's bring them on. Uh, speaking of, uh, other low tech techniques, we're, we're gonna guys, we're, we're about to watch some in action here. Let me pull the overlay off. 
All right, and I think we want to pull this one up. All right, what's up, man? Hey, can you hear me? Yep, I can. All right, so here's what I'm going to do, 90. I'm going to pull you off for a minute. Him and I are going to chit-chat, chop it up. Yeah, no way. And, and, I mean, and then, no problem. I'll take a little break away from here. And then when um, he goes to actually do his live, we'll pull you back on because it looks nice, and then we can get some, you know, it'll just be some nice banter. Nice. All right, let me pull up, up your overlay. All right, guys, so uh, if you're just tuning in, this is Shay of Microdex Mushrooms. We had him on the show uh, a little while ago, and I was very struck by uh, his story. I got to know him a little bit. First off, he just can grow mushrooms. I mean, at the end of the day, the guy knows how to grow mushrooms. And then when I got to know him, I found out, oh, he's, you know, he's he's using a lot of low-tech techniques uh, to great success. I mean, as you can see there, that is uh, some lovely uh, reishi antlers going on there. Love it. Dude, That you got your uh, Halloween costume right there. You just put that on your head and get yourself oh, a little button I'm nose. You can go on. I'm actually doing that. I, there you yeah, go. I want to make like pauldrons and stuff out of reishi. Yeah. Because um, it just looks so sick. Um, reminds me of like Monster Hunter, stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Very cool. So so the last time you were on we were talking about you you know just you had some exposure to the medicinal benefits of lion's mane and it was so such a powerful experience for you it, it motivated this whole you know rabbit hole uh you just jumped down the rabbit hole you're growing mushrooms um i find you uh, on instagram with just some great looking gourmet grows and I'm like, okay, who is this guy? I got to, you know, let's talk to this guy. Where's he come from? What's he up to? And uh, you're you're doing a lot with a lot of low-tech techniques. Now, mm-hmm. since then, um, your hard work has not gone, uh, you know, it's been recognized by more than just me and, and some of your followers. Um, do you want to tell people a little bit about uh, your your new uh, partnership uh job what whatever it is talk to me about what you're doing because now i see you you're putting on the lab coat yeah. and you're working with some cool toys so talk to me about uh what you're up to and what that's been like going from the kitchen to the lab all right so for people who don't know me i'm shay uh, i started microdex mushrooms around like march 2021 and uh i just fell in love with mushrooms i got a grow kit from north spore shout out north spore uh linesman kit watched it grow fucking blew my mind uh and here i am like specializing in in lion's mane cultivation and reishi and all that stuff uh, when i first started out i got a like a five piece culture kit and i just went to town and i kind of treated it like like uh playing pokemon without a strategy guide i just tried to figure out how to grow these things and the most research that I would do is I would maybe like ask questions on Reddit and then until eventually, like I was the one giving advice because I was just like, this happened during kind of like what, uh, uh, Frank was saying, um, the furlough just took a blow to my life. I lost my job, you know, but, um, then the mushrooms found me and then I had the time to be obsessed with it. And it was also, as I was like going into it, I could see there was a career path in here. So I could allow myself to get taken away and get swooped up in it. And here I am now. I work for Point Cell Technology uh, as a private contractor. I do educational content for them. I started right here in this kitchen. Didn't know anything about mushrooms at all. Just doing this oven tech up to like 95% to 100% efficiency. It didn't start like that. You know, you got to grind to right. um, get your your protocols, your inner protocol. Even if you're not writing stuff down, you just get like this feeling of what's like, what's good, what's not. And eventually it just smooths out and you're not even trying anymore. So I went from this and then I started teaching classes locally um, at a local plant shop. And while I was in there one day, it was like uh, my seventh class. Uh, someone who worked for Plant Cell Tech happened to be in the store just looking at plants. And she heard me talking about uh, uh, mushroom tissue culture and cloning. She just overheard me and 
uh, pretty much just offered me a job wow. doing their fungi division uh, for their plant company. And that's what I do now. Well, like, mostly, it's kind of like full-time. Uh, I do, like, the educational stuff, but I'm in the lab, like, three times a week. I'm doing stuff here. And a few days ago, I just got my first glow hood, and I'm, like, two and a half years in that. I don't even need it at this point. Like I ordered it back in November as like a pre-order and back in November, I would have never expected I would be working at a laboratory right. with like six glow hoods and an all American. And I, I work, I've been working on two press those like this whole time. So it's, yep. it's crazy. Well, I think that's amazing. I, I think it's a very inspirational story. And uh, for me, just from my perspective on paying attention to you for a while, uh, makes perfect sense to me. Your eyes were on the prize. You were focused on the mushrooms. You're always trying to learn, always trying to improve. Um, all your content on Instagram, I could ju it was just obvious that you were learning out loud and you were paying attention and like you said, you might not always have to take, you might not always be like writing it all out, but you're really paying attention during the process and, and, and you're getting things figured out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that got recognized and now you're, it, it, it's great. I mean, I, I'm, I'm certain another year from now and another two years from now, every time I have you back on, it's going to be something new and more exciting because you're okay. just. You're really focused on it. I recognize it. It's, it's how really I helpful. am. I love it. Yeah, man, it's great. Um, especially, like, there are weeks. I just think, like, a, a week at a time. Like, what do I need to do? What can I do today to make things easier for me tomorrow? Yeah. Um, you can always do something in my college. You go, like, go clone some stuff. Uh, trying to not run out of plates. Um making microculture and stuff like that. And I'm always wondering like what the next step is. So it never ends. Never ends. It never ends. Public. Yeah. It does not. Today already, what did I do today? Uh, sealed up some plates, did about a hundred transfers, uh, cleaned up some, some bacterial spawn, tossed it out, out in the back. And yeah. that's all while I'm, you know, taking care of the kitties and, uh, my, you know, getting my wife, uh, ready to go on her trip and, exactly. and then thinking Things about study. this podcast know, never like ends. Hard. Yeah. Never ends. It's, it's difficult, especially when, when you love what you do and it's not, it doesn't really feel like a chore, oh, uh, no. balancing that with the other responsibilities of life and that can be tough, but that is life. It's just about finding yeah. balance. Exactly. No all right, so um, I got a little question here. Uh, Thai guy grows high. Uh, many do, Thai guy. Uh, he says, uh, Shay, do you pour plates with oven tech? Could you talk about your process a bit? So um, yep. I think he'll talk about it and he will demonstrate uh, some inoculation, maybe not the agar pouring, but yeah, you yeah, want to talk a little bit about it. Yeah, um, so great question. Is this... Agar pouring for oven tech is literally the hardest thing on oven tech. Like you can make bags easy. It doesn't really, it feels like you're just standing in front of a flow hood. As long as you can feel the, the heat on your hands, you know, you're in the sterile flow. So there's like, you never have to wonder, but for, uh, for pouring the plates, if you go to my Instagram real quick, that's where I post most of my stuff consistently. I post just about every day. Um, I actually shared on my story today, uh, a time lapse of me pouring right here you can check that out but i'm going to explain it uh really uh really good tip if something is food safe you don't need to sterilize it so it's pretty much sterile so when you get like these ramekins this is sealed in a bag and then it's inside of another bag so you can open this bag and you'll still have them sterile right spray the bag anyway and then lay them all out uh, uh, try not to expose the um the inside of the cup, and I kind of set them all up with the cups. Is normally when you would pour like petri dishes, you'd stack them all straight up, but you can't do that with these because this is like really technical. But once you know why, you'll understand. 
it's like so this is the cup and once you put the, the lid on if you put it all the way on you're not gonna be able to like open that too well with one right. hand especially if you stack them so you literally can't stack them and do it the way you do it with petri dish so you need surface area um set them all up and you would just do everything pretty much normally but you have to think about one hand has a job, the other hand has another job. You're lifting the cups up, you're pouring them. And you can see in the video, I'm going in rows from the from the back to the front, just so I'm not like reaching over um, the cups. Like, it can't. Uh, no, that's an important yeah. point. The, the hovering, yeah. you don't want to be hot. You always have to yeah. think that unless you're wearing gloves, Mm -hmm. um that you're pretty frequently isoing um yeah you if you're just barehanded which a lot of people do ed don't tell ed grand you do it he'll get real upset um, yeah oh my god <laughs> I do. uh shay knows yep. um, so yeah he, he gave me a but firm your skin too. is always <laughs> sloughing off of your hands pretend you're wet all the time and like, dripping yes dripping, dripping bacteria. bacteria everywhere so so if you move your hand over something no yeah, bueno. you never want to reach over things. But the reason I do oven tech with um with no gloves is so like if you do get contamination, then you know that you messed up. It's like playing a game on hard mode. Right. Um, but you know if you do all your plates and none of your plates come out contaminated and you didn't wear gloves and you just you were just freehand pouring and just making sure you're not reaching over stuff and it's still good. That means your technique is your like sterile perfect. tech was on point. For so sure. then when you go and you get your flow hood, you don't even have to think about anything. Like it's like playing the game right. on easy mode at that point. Yep. So I would encourage you uh, like people to just challenge themselves. I know like if you can afford to go start with a flow hood, that's great. But what if you don't have, you don't want to feel like, you can't do work if you don't have expensive equipment because it's going right. to become, you might be at your friend's house. He doesn't have a flow hood, but guess what he probably has? He probably has a fucking oven. Right. Right. And then you Who can doesn't? walk in and just right. teach your friend how to like grow stuff in his kitchen. And literally I, when I do my work to, cause uh, I'm also a chef, like I like to cook every day. So I'll come in, I'll do my food and my uh, fungi prep at the same time. So I'll like, do my food prep and then i like start keep i'll like pretty much just go back and forth so if i'm prepping grain it's soaked overnight so now i'm just putting it in jars and then i'll come over here i'll, I'll jar all that up wash my hands come over here and just cook and stuff right and i don't have a funny enough i don't have a like a a hood over my oven or my uh my stove or anything so and also have two dogs so don't think like my place is any different than anyone else's like my air is dirty or it's like right. it's it's standard and i got like i'll cook in here wait until i can look at the light and make sure like the air is clear enough and then i'll just do inoculations open my oven and no content right it's like you just got to play with with uh your air quality and see now it's so it's also uh fair to say we don't really use it in uh the myco community so much but uh i remember when i took my first uh microbiology course um we did all our inoculations uh in open air just next to the bunsen burner because that that yeah. the convection coming off the bunsen burner creates a sterile little area you know they taught you about all that and yeah. we never had issues with that. So, so this convection, the the concept of convection, um, a, as a way of providing, um, or uh, not providing, but basically moving contaminants in the air away from what you're doing, yeah. it works. I mean, it's it's sure. uh, it, everything it's common lab head. practice, uh, all the way up until like uh, like two three weeks ago. Uh, in the lab and stuff, every single thing I've ever posted has been from Oven Tech. Like, this is where I started, and I never found a reason to move off of it. It's just too convenient. It's more consistent than a salve. You don't have to wonder what the air is doing. Yep. It's like, yeah, you can't see the air, you can't see the contaminants, but when you can feel the air on your hands, 
that's that's just as good as seeing it. Um, and you, you are kind of working like on a, a bit of a timer. Is there some back pressure to the oven? Eventually, it's been open long enough. It's going to start cooling down. So you can get like a good 20 to 25 minute session until mm -hmm. like there's just like this tiny bit of loft. But that's when the air is going to start coming back in on you. Oh. But I'm usually way done by then, like right. no matter what. And I have two uh, two pressos, and I can go through both of them. Just like in between, I close the oven, and it builds back up the pressure. I switch pots, make sure everything's laid out good, and then I just open it up and rip it again, get another 20 minutes. I did not know that. That is good to know. So how about this? So before you demonstrate, kind of walk us through how you get the oven set up. Is there a kind of oven that doesn't work? Do they all work? Yeah. Is, you know, it's just little little bits about that would, would be helpful. And then uh, when you're ready to go, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll pull the other uh, the other feed and uh, what 90 will bring 90 on for some commentary. Okay. So one thing to watch out for. Um, so we use, uh, what is it? We often use isopropyl alcohol. Some people have gas ovens. Some gas ovens have open flames right. on the top where the boiler is. So if you have that, you have to be ultra careful. Like, <laughs> I don't even recommend that people, I never recommend that people use a gas oven for this, just for that reason, because they'll be like, oh, I'm just, if, if you decide to take that risk and do that, right. and by the way, I've, I've done inoculations over other people's gas ovens during like private license. And I'm literally drilling them like, because when I give them direction, you know how when you're uh, teaching someone to drive and you're like, hey, turn left when you want, like when you can, right? Not now when I right, tell you. Right. It's like, I watch them and wait for them to try to spray with, with the oven open. Because it'll, it'll fall, even though the flow is coming up here, the particles of 70% um, iceberg alcohol is going to fall into the right. oven if it catches that flame it's going to come right back up and it's not going to like kill you or anything but it's really startling and it can be dangerous so yeah if you have a gas oven and you try this i would say just sterilize all your tools You'll, actually yeah just be very careful about iceberg alcohol uh things falling in the oven don't rush to pick it up like you might reach over and like knock the pot into the oven right. and you'll see in the other view, I actually just have this. Um, all I do is I, I have this metal rack and I take it and I put my uh, pressure cooker on top of it. So it's only covering like this part. Okay. And then I have this space to work with. So when I put it underneath, Two birds, one stone, and I can put up to That's like perfect six jars, like right here, and just work in this space. So you see, like this is this is my workspace, but my flow is way out here. So as long as I'm working here, I'm safe, and it's not just pushing the air; it's almost like pasteurizing the air because it's coming out hot. Mm -hmm. So um, every oven is different, especially a gas oven you would probably end up doing it like 300 to 350. Uh, you want to do it as hot as you can stand it. Uh, but also remember, like if you're doing plate work, it is hot. You don't want to cook your mycelium. That's right. never happened to me, but obviously it can happen if you're working in a hot environment. I put my electric oven on 420 just to get that back pressure going. And uh, to keep the wait, coil- Wait, wait, did you just say you put it on 420? Yes, sir. Only just because that's the ideal temperature. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but um, I put on 420 just to get that coil heated because um, all the heat is just coming from like the single coil that's like, it's like this shape at the bottom. Right. And I just want to keep that on as much as possible to keep that continuous wave of heat coming through. Right. Um, so I think... Yeah, so that's uh, precautions for using the oven. Uh, if you drop stuff in, don't rush down and get it. It's not going to melt immediately. Like if you, I drop plastic ramekin cups in my oven, maybe like 
once every like 10 inoculations like days and it takes so long for it to melt like wow. just without moving the air around you just reach down grab it and just throw it just throw it away go oh no like never do that just like you don't want to catch a knife as it's falling if you like drop your knife you don't try to catch that knife that is yo yeah that's like scalpel. when you drop the scalpel right when you drop oh, your scalpel oh, oh, dude scalpel. all i do is i just hop back as yeah soon as exactly I'm like, like hop them back because yeah. i do not want to stab my foot yeah that is the worst um so that's a good that's a good instinct because you are you are working around something that's very hot. Don't let your instincts to grab something or catch something cause you to basically be a fool. Exactly. Have your wits about you. All right. So, so you uh, you about ready to so, so tell everybody what we're about to see. What are you doing? Okay. Um. So in this pot, I have sixteen uh, grain containers uh tiny little mason jars mm -hmm. uh, right here on the side i had to pull some of these out of the pressure cooker that's why it's open already but i have some master's mix for some gourmets i have some some really popping lion's mane here oh yeah you can see that's that's ready to go blizzard in a bottle that's what i like to see right there you see those wiling out up at the top yep. yeah yeah they're Super looking for happy. something else to colonize. We're gonna give it to them. <laughs> They're I'm ready. Just break this up. So, um, part of the prep of before I open the oven, I always have a game plan because I want to get it done real quick. You don't want to backtrack when you're inoculating. Right. Oh, no. Confusion. I'm just gonna break these up first a little bit. So we're gonna be inoculating some wine stain blocks. I like watching other people's break techniques with, with jars. I've been doing martial arts my whole life. So I, I, uh, I was just thinking like it looks culture. like a strike move. Like you're gonna, you're gonna yeah. break a board or something. So we, we're going to do a four, four to five pound block of lion's mane with, uh, and that's going to consist of three mason jars of master's mix and one of these jars. Now, I know some people are thinking, like, you're not in any kind of sterile flow. How the fuck are you doing this? So, you, this has been sitting on a counter. I leave stuff all over the house. Uh, so, just before I use it, I completely, I crack the lid. Spray it down. Now, typically, my substrate is coming straight out of sterile because this is already cool and sterilized. Right. Except the pot. So once I open this up and the flow comes up, once I pop this and move it in, it never left sterile right. flow. Yeah. So that's really important. Like I almost always go sterile to sterile, and I know like the oven tech's not sterile, but for all intents and purposes, it's I call it sterile enough. It's right. sterile enough. It doesn't matter that it's not sterile. So I'm going to give, because these substrates are not in um, the pot, I have to spray these. I don't ever take any chances. If, it, if it's not coming out of a pot, it's getting sprayed. It's going to take me a second. I love it. So while you're doing this, I'm going to point something out. Um, so in my uh, grain spawn jars, I use uh, no lid. Uh, most of them, I, I have a few where, depending upon how many I run, I might do some, uh, you know, some filter patch lids. But I usually do no tack lid tack. So it's just you flip the, you know, that inner disc upside down and you mm -hmm. crack it open as it's uh, inoculating. But an important point, I think, something I wasn't doing in the beginning that I started doing and I, I, I think it, it improved the situation for me. Uh, so when you, after you're done inoculating and you're tightening the lid and shaking it up or doing whatever you're doing, I would do just like uh, Shay's doing. I would spray the outside, wipe it down 
before I re-loosened it again. That way I don't have just any skin bacteria, you, you know, any Staphylococcus or, or Pseudomonas or whatever happens to be on my hand, um, touching that jar, just giving it maybe a little bit of a chance to, to, to get in there. Um, so he's oh. being really meticulous with, with uh, spraying down his jars. I think that's an important point and to make. One other thing before I like actually open the oven and start rolling, because I'm not going to try not to talk too much as I'm yep. doing it. Yep. Be slow. Um, I literally take my grow bags and I just like t 25 at a time, I just put them in Ziploc bags and I put them so the mouth is down here on the other side. So when I open these, I can just pull them straight out like this. Okay. And this is good because if you put it in the other way, you have to touch the opening yeah, with you your don't. hands. Yeah. Little stuff like that will contaminate something. So, and I'm inoculating these all like this is inoculated and this is sterile. Right. These bags come sterile too, but I'm not even treating them like, you know, I open air, put these bags in the right. Ziploc bag. As long as you don't open them up, the inside of the bag is sterile. So what you're going to see me do, I'm going to pull this straight out the bag, dump all this stuff in and seal it with microfort tape. I don't, I don't Perfect. trust those, those, um, what do you call those, uh, the sealers? Because I always see problems with shipping and stuff where the seal will break or something. Yeah. I'm sure there's like some reliable ones out there. If you guys have any like reliable sealer recommendations, please send that to me because I need to move up on that for the lab. Oh, I yeah. got I got one for you. It, it works well. The trick is getting the five mil band. Um, getting at least the five mil band. Now the, the best are the ones that are like 800 to a thousand dollars and they have an element oh. on both sides yeah. um, that, that really helps. But the one I have works really well. I'll, I've been looking to get rid of it. So we'll, we'll, oh, we'll talk, we'll we'll talk later. Yeah. Okay. All right. So All let right. me pull 90 on. Cause it, we, now we got, you know, you're putting on a show. You need an audience. Yeah, for sure. All right. Okay, so, so guys, if you're just tuning in, Shay is going to do some uh, some oven tech inoculation uh, or, or knocking up some some bags, basically. So we we got two points of view here. We we got the waist up, and then we got the like the shoulders down, so we can really see uh, what's going on here with oven tech. So now, and you're running. It's an electric stove, electric oven, at, set at four twenty. Four twenty. Let's get it. 420 here we go i right, just sprayed my hands real quick the kitchen is a lab just like i said there's nothing against it so my lids are loose so this is going to be easy this hand is holding the, the bag open mm-hmm so now i'm holding the bag I'm see. holding the jar with the bag, and then I just hit it. And another thing, in case people miss it, people who are not really like the newbies who don't have this background maybe don't think about sterile techniques so much. But if you guys really pay attention to the technique here, you know, he sterilized the mouth of the jar. He's he's being very careful about what he's touching and what he's not touching. And that's, that's a skill that you, you kind of acquire over time. You can watch a hundred videos on it, but until you really just start doing it, it's just going to take, take a while to, to get it down. So now, he's I working. Lost it. I lost it in the chat, but somebody asked if the oven was fully open or just cracked open. So I let them know it's just cracked. And you want to stay in that deep zone because geeky, you mentioned how in the lab where you learned, a lot of people learn to stay in that Bunsen burner yep, flames zone. That that's little, your sterile area. Yep. You don't want to go outside of that area. Yep. So he just for everybody watching, so the oven is on, it's cracked open, and he's got this little metal grate here. He's using the pressure cooker itself to kind of stabilize the grate that's hanging over the right the here's the oven the doors open so all that just through convection of hot air it's it's wafting air up so think about it like this 
whatever latent contamination is in the air is being just lifted up and, and away from the area he's working right now. He also uh, made the point of he's trying not to talk too much because you don't want to talk ad and spit <laughs> into your bags. Basically, that is a problem. A... When oh, I'm trying is. to record in the 90 kitchen, um, I'm, I record my stuff in real time. So I don't do voiceovers, which I probably should, but I'm speaking right there. I'm speaking right there in my shots. So the rack, I think a lot of people don't know, but you can look up. Um, it's like a cookie cooling rack, right, Shay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like a baking cooling cookie rack yeah. for the kitchen, because people will also find them to put in front of their flow hoods. Oh yeah. So real quick, I uh, I closed the oven just to set up the next thing. Um. So this is just more alliance main grain spawn but i'm making plugs now and so i'm just going to do a grain to wood so i already sterilized this for two hours the way i prepped this i just soaked it in uh some grain water from soaking grain spawn so i just used the water that was left over poured it over some uh wood uh dowels okay and now it's it's hydrated. Then I sterilize it for two hours in these jars. Now I'm just going to introduce the the grain to the actual wood. And in like two weeks, it'll be fully inoculated and ready to go. So I'm going to open nice. the oven. Going to make sure I uh, actually loosen my jars up. Remember, we are uh, loosening these jars so we can do everything one-handed. Because we have to hold the bag. Right. Bag life. But, I mean, sooner or later, if you stay in this game, you're going to grow some mushrooms in a bag. It's just, I don't know too many people that haven't. I know, um, if anybody remembers, Home Mycology has been through many channels. He started Condiment and Oven Tech like years ago on YouTube. Um, his, his and YouTube just kept striking and deleting his channels. Hmm. Yeah, I actually talked to him not too long ago. We're gonna have him back on. He did some HPLC testing of some stuff and got some results back. So we're gonna talk about that. And yeah, we'll we'll have we'll have him back on here shortly. Or I'm sorry, I'm thinking of uh, Fun Guy Fruits. Oh. My bad. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm yeah. talking about... Oh, yeah, I couldn't get home mycology on. I think I talked to him one time about being on, and he, I just dropped the ball. Oh, I have a live stream with him. I think that one is still up in my live stream playlist. Ooh, you know, nice. he gets kind of nervous, you know. We're in front of a crowd, if you think about it. Yeah. Imagine being in a room right now in front of 171 people. Yeah. Oh, my your kitchen, God. In yeah. your kitchen, watching yeah. you with the oven open. Looking yeah, at exactly. every inch, looking at every inch of your kitchen, like, oh, look at that faucet back there. Oh, yeah, look at this, look yeah. at this rack. Y'all know damn well I cleaned up in here before you came up in hey, here. Hey, look at those, yeah. look at that pot and pan hanging Man. there. Yeah, that's, that's the good stuff. There you go. Done deal. All right, so how, how long is that going to take to fully colonize? Like two weeks. Two weeks, nice. Well, also, I mean, that's, that's 200 did, plugs. Did oh. Shay, did you mention what? type of bag is that the a filter b or t uh these are 14 a uh unicorn bags nice. so a filter that's 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 what uh, i use point, right in point by micron yep yep nice yeah uh, i don't really suggest anyone growing on point twos unless you have a specific reason to because i did some tests like for shiitake usually they take three months to incubate um i did that in a 0.25 micron and it took like five months instead so they really want that air and you kind of see the same thing across the board for most species like they need that air or they pretty much go into um, a much slower state of colonization anaerobic yeah yeah i think the that point two is just not i mean if you've ever like if you got a point two bag and you kind of, you know, seal it up and then just try to push it thinking you can get air through that filter patch. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's not. Yeah. Well, the, uh, point five barely, barely gets it through. So I don't know that. that if the, people don't know, 
um, the filters are T, A, and B. So think of tab. Yeah. And T I is love to think two, about tab. T, so point, T is 0.2 micron. A lot of vendors will sell their pre-sterilized grain in a T filter bag because it has the most filtration. A is the next step up in between T and B, and that's 0.5. And the B filters are the 5.0 micron rating, where that is the most airflow you could have, which also means a lot less filtration. So yeah. I like to stick with A just like Shea because it's right in between T and B. You've got 0.5, lots of breathability, lots of gas exchange. Oh, yeah. Fresh condiment cup right there. Look at those little fruits. Looking good. I would just I would just pop that right in my mouth like a jello shot. Just eat I it. Might. <laughs> do do it live. <laughs> the, can, we um, can we do that? Is that risky? The uh the point five, I mean, if you're fruiting something, right? This this is pretty much why I'm m m I don't have a great opinion of all in one bags because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Because you got to start with a point two, and then you just got to start chopping the thing up. You can't, your tech has to be a little bit more elaborate to allow for enough air exchange once you're actually, uh, you know, once you've colonized the top layer of the grain spawn and you mix it up. Now you got to introduce more air. And uh, I don't see a lot of the people talking about that so much. So I'm not a fan of that. I know people can do it and, and do do it, but. I feel like it's That's two separate I, I, bags. 0. 0.2 for grain, 0. 0.5 for fruiting. I try to stick with the details, and and that's why my videos end up being like you know an hour, forty five minutes, two hours long because I'm going through every detail. Yep. And it's half and half. On people hate it, people love it. I'm sure people tonight didn't know about the TAB filters. They had yeah. no idea what fourteen A, ten T, you know XLSB. Yeah. What you know? What the hell is that? But tonight, now you know. Well, I mean, I'm sitting on a box of XLSA bags that I'm debating, should I use them or should I keep them as collector's items? Because lately, <laughs> man, the XLSA bag is hard to get your hands on. Like that Uncle Ben bag I showed earlier. It's a collector's yeah. item. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been uh, enjoying John Allen and uh, my buddy uh, Rizzy Basidio Carp. Uh, They've been having a lot of fun banter back and forth. Rizzy does just some really phenomenal Facebook posts about the the history of the Cubensis community. Um, he's he's a true Michaelophile. He, he's broadly interested in mushrooms, and uh, it's cool. He'll post something about the history, and then John Allen will be like, "Here's my photos from like I was there, and I was standing right over here," or "Oh, he sent me that photo too," and. Yeah, it's been cool to see that stuff. So, Shay, have you ever had a jar break when you break it up with your hands like that? Whoa. So, there was never from me, but one time a uh, a jar cracked in here, and oh. I was about to hit it, and I noticed oh. it was cracks, like, through yeah. here. Oh. So, I always check now, because holy crap. Yeah. I saw my light flash before my eyes. And also, I don't just go in. I'm like, I hit it, see if it'll loosen, and I use the least amount of force possible. Yeah, yeah. people, I, if you get a feel for it, you'll develop a technique to where you'll be able to kind of tap and bang on these jars to where you can feel the tension, and it's you can you just know yeah. it's not going to break at that moment. Because like what you're doing in the kitchen right now, mm -hmm. jars to bags, it's a great hybrid technique. Because I also do the same thing. There's people yeah. that go bags through the whole process, and you know it's a little bit too much for me personally. But yeah. jars, yeah, but also, bags. like sterilizing stuff in bags, is like hit or miss for me at least. Yeah, um, I like the jars. I can keep a solid ratio, and it keeps everything consistent. It's like oh, I use for most of my production stuff, like uh, lion's mane blocks, when I'm trying to get good yield. Three to four jars of substrate and one jar of uh, grain spawn. So I do like a one four or one three, depending on how I'm feeling. Uh, once you get up to like one five, it's like this block is going to produce so much, I'm not going to want to throw it away. So I'd rather just get two, three good flushes and then just toss them. Uh, 
that's the best way to do it because a lot of people get lost in the poundage because everybody's using bags for every step when really your ratios are 100% based on volume. So people who say, oh, I use a pound of grain to a pound of substrate, it doesn't, you know, you can maybe roughly equate a pound to a quart. But once you're going with straight quart jars, you know exactly what that ratio is in volume because the weight of everything is going to be different. When you spawn to a bulk substrate, it's it's based on volume and people lose sight of that. So that's good. Yeah, I, I, I didn't start like that. I just kind of, it happened naturally. Like I found myself there after a while. I'm like, it's just easier to do everything in jars. And then when I go to fruit, just move it to a bag. And that way, um, I can put them all over my house and test them and put them in different places. Cause you know, when someone receives a fruiting okay, you don't know what their house looks like. So you have to pre-test these things and make sure that they're like going to be successful for other people. Cause that's what it's all about. And that's what I loved about like the North store kit. Like I didn't know. And it was huge. It got massive. And that like, that was big for me. So now I'm just trying to like provide that for other people. And most of the kids, like, I work more on a local level than online. I know I do a lot of stuff online, but I'm really just trying to, like, invest myself in the people around me. Um, I find that a lot more uh, fulfilling. It makes it keeps me going. It, like, I know people that I'm helping um, and developing friendships like that and stuff. But, uh, you know, the people around here, they get my block. They get like five, six flushes off the things. And I'm like, geez, like powder some of that stuff. And they're like good to go. Um, it's, it's just so fun. But um, we do have all this grain in here. And this will be real fast. So for doing these agar cups, you can just like unscrew. Oh, this is Piapino, by, by the way. I'm uh, going to do a That's my favorite, Piapino. Yeah, they're so awesome. Uh, I thought I saw some contempt. That wasn't contempt. So I'm just going to squeeze these uh, the, like that. Oh, oh. oh Shay giving right. away the pro moves. Right in right your mouth. There. Here we go. Right. Down it. Ready. Right in your mouth. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. That's actually was considering. Oh, I shouldn't say that on there. Um, I have a business idea. Actually, I'm just going to say it. Yo, well, if it's good, man, like don't give it away, ahead. dude. No, no. Go I, ahead. I got, I'm a few steps ahead already, so it won't even matter. We'll talk about it later. I want to get through this real quick. Okay. Like, this oven is on. I'm, you see me sweating? I'm oh, sweating. I mean, I'm sweating thinking about how sweating I would, how much sweating I'd be doing, yeah. So we're just going to inoculate. I have 16 jars in here. We're probably not going to do all of them, but I do need to I have some albino riptide, some eight, and some more lines made because I got to keep that going. Nice. So I'm going to do, I'm going to pop all these in as fast as I can. And then I'm going to do a quick grain to grain just to give everyone an idea of what that looks like, too. Cool. So we're just going to, I got to make sure I know what these are. So once I spray these, the, the marker is going to go away. Make sure you don't do that to yourself. You don't want to have oh, to yes. guess what your genetics are. Um, so I'm going to spray these real quick. And then I'm going to set them outside of the sterile flow because they're going to be drenched in ISO, so nothing's going to contaminate it anyway. Always have to remember, label everything. You don't want to lose track of what you're doing. Yeah, because you might as well just be throwing it in the trash because you're going to have to start from scratch just to figure out what it is anyway. Or you're going to spawn like a grain. wood lover to manure, then a manure lover to wood, and then something else to coco coir. Which for all those 90 fans, coco coir is the rough material made from the shells of coconuts, if you didn't know. Ooh, that just got me to thinking... Uh, bonsai fungi, he should take half a coconut and do a grow on half a coconut. That might be fun. Sounds like something I'll have to do with him, yeah. Or a whole coconut. 
Yeah. You put the cocoa coir in the coconut and you mix it all up. Yeah. You know? Exactly. <laughs> all right, so I just threw all the aluminum off. I don't need this video right now. What is this? That's Ganoderma senescence, the black lychee. If I have some jars left over, I'm going to do a grain to grain of that too. But my, the thing I'm thinking about the most is the Piopino, because I only have one grain jar of it. So I'm okay. doing that. Love Piopino only because they look just like cubes. Look yeah. Just like any standard golden teacher. It's all I grow, dude. Piopino. American Piopino experiments. That's what it's all about. There's different strains of Piopino in the mycology, like gourmet world. There's like those short, fat ones, then the ones that grow nice and tall, like Cubensis. All right, Brandon Schaefer wants to know, has anyone put their ISO inside a Flaresol bottle? Um, I put my water in it just because that's when I really need, like, you know, if I'm rehydrating a cake or something, that's kind of where I want it. Um, but I don't see why you couldn't do that. Now, another little pro label. tip about your, uh, your distilled water bottles is every once in a while, it's a good idea to toss a little bleach in there and uh, spray it through, let it sit for a minute. Um, I, I think it is possible for, even if you're using distilled water, for those to, you know, collect a little no goodness in there. Where there's standing water, there can be contamination. That's what go. they always say. That's why you open up your oven. That's the wine gland. All right, so he just did lion's mane. And again, he's just working right over that part of the grill where the convection process is just moving contamination away. My, I, I have to guess this would be similar to, <laughs> it would be similar to uh, with Uncle Ben's. Um, I think nine times out of 10, if you're going to get can contamination this way, it's just going to be from something as simple as... Uh, you know, bacteria on your hand or just like that random little trick of dermospore that just happened to tenaciously find its way back in there. Um, I, I think this is a, a pretty solid method. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, here's a little tidbit. I used to have, there was an old video I made about examining mushroom genetics and it was apes, which is albino penis envy. And the joke is American Piopino experiment for YouTube. <laughs> but the plates look clean they're a little dry but not really every time i would transfer a piece out it always contaminated to be just pure like green mold hmm. the only thing i could think is that there was mold spores somewhere sitting on the mycelium that just never took hold but it was dry enough to keep the spore preserved right to where i transferred to a nice environment and it always took over over that mycelium when I didn't see it visually before I made the transfer. So if there's contamination with the oven tech, it could be something hidden somewhere. It could be, yeah. I mean, I, I would also guess that with Uncle Ben's tech, if you inoculate 20 bags and three of them contam and the rest don't, those three bags were not as sterile as the rest. I mean, again, this is all for food grade consumption, so it's pretty sterile. It's not truly sterile so you you know most of the contamination is going to come from your syringe or inoculation method sure. the actual alum itself no or i'm saying literally... if you did 20 and night and like 17 or 18 of them were good and a couple weren't i feel like you can't blame your tech your technique at that point no. um, and you can't blame your inoculum at that point because it would you know contaminate more things so i'm saying in that case but yeah, I think most people are going to get contamination from Uncle Ben's because they don't know what they're doing. They're buying from a buddy of a buddy who got... It's you the know, beginner, the, yeah, yeah, the beginner factor. Now, I pulled up this in there. Uh, from Karen Slayer. She said, have a hood and still pour agar using the oven. I mean, this is kind of what I wanted tonight to be about was just to highlight that these techs work. Um, Uncle Ben's works. Um, oven tech works. 
uh, you know, all these other low tech options, uh, you know, if, if they work for you, keep using them. Uh, especially if your, your success is high and you like doing it right. If you love working in a st still air box, keep working in a still air box. Why would the you kitchen is the lab. You yeah. love the kitchen. You love the lab, put them together. Exactly. There you go. I normally wait until I'm completely done, but there's a lot of stuff going on. So, like, label. Right. But it's coming up on the last bit. I think I have there's seven more jars in here. I'm going to do four. I need, I need the, the most amount of PO that I can get. So. Is that, that's the 23 core, right? Presto? Yeah. Yeah. We're coarse. I won't name names. Somebody I know bought a very fancy all American and uh two weeks later was like, Yeah, I really don't hate that twenty three quart presto. Huh. Nothing wrong with it. That's the standard. I still run the sixteen quart from the Walmart shelf. Nice. I got one of those too. Yeah. That's what I bought. Without right? the gauge, just the weight. Mm. All right, my buddy Flacco's Fungi just said, I love how everybody has their own style. SAB or Flow Hood or Oven Tech. Couldn't agree more, dude. It's what, you know, I just love highlighting all this different stuff because what I don't want is anybody to ever feel like there's only one way to do this. There is absolutely not. That goes along with what you said of when you posted in the Facebook group and you said, hey, I made this and it worked so well for me. And everybody said, no, it doesn't. You're lying. That sucks. It doesn't work. Right. And you had great results. It's like, it worked for me. I guess you just can't tell anybody about it when it works for you. Unless it goes along <laughs> with their lines of what works. Yeah. Uh, the internet, it's so fascinating. It's so fascinating. The, the variety of personalities you get to interact with. So not all in the chat said i just like to keep things as simple and as cheap as possible that's really my motto that's low tech tonight here if it works it's simple it works so now i will say that what he's doing right now the grain to grain um <clears throat> one thing i love about popcorn is that uh when i break it up I, my grain to grain is real smooth. They they roll right out of there. Um, yeah. They tend to not. You really got to get like a little shake technique going. Uh, get your mind out of the gutter, YouTube viewers. Um, right? You got to get a little shake technique going because, man, if, if you like overdo it and then it just <laughs> dumps half the bag in there and yeah. So. And this is the benefit All of popcorn. That's like when you're seasoning things. You go left to right. You don't go front to back. Oh, see, that's a chef so, move. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. It like comes, it travels oh, like yeah, that. That's, yeah, there you go. Nice. Yeah, popcorn kernels are great. Big size. That's why adding coffee is great. It doesn't it? Not only does it add nitrogen, um, but it also fills in the gaps between the grains for the mycelium to kind of jump around to the different big popcorn kernels. Yeah. And it breaks up so easily. Yeah, I'm a believer. I have this belief that somehow the mic loves the space between the popcorn kernels. That's my little weird, absolutely That's where it unproven. Gets a little breathing room. Right. Now, I will say that, so so let's say you got just a jar full of uh, fully hydrated uh, millet, especially if some's like overhydrated, you could create like an almost anaerobic pocket of, uh, uh, you know, a region within the jar or the bag. And especially in bags where like those little cracks and crevices towards the bottom kind of get no matter People what. People love that. No soak, no simmer millet right in the bag into the pressure cooker. And you end yeah. up with that. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I've, I've found it can be. I just got to, for me, I need foolproof. I never, never, never have contaminated jars anymore. Although I say never, and then I just had two jars contaminate. But that's because I'm pretty sure my LC that I got was. Well, that sounds like you had some fecal flakes flying. 
Yeah, got a little fecal flakes in there. Yeah. It's really like you know the ratio that it's going to contaminate, at, so you just do a little extra, and then it's like it never happened. Right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's true, though. I mean, there there really is a you did it done. Yep. Look at that. Yeah. He's working. He's working on the show, getting his work done. Like literally, I was just thinking that I'm like, damn, I'm like knock shit out right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's do it. It. Live. yeah, that's what I need to do. I need to just live turn on my camera and just do work all day in front of 169 yeah. people. Yeah. Just did it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's really more guys because if you can think about it, who's watching live right now, or you can think, you know, in a week or two, it'll be thousands of people. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I think about that all the time where I'm doing something simple, like a personal project. I'm like, I could literally be filming this for content. Someone's going to yeah. find value in that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so focused on like other stuff going on in life. It's like, wait, I'm not a full time content creator. So I could be going live right now. I'm taking a dump. And it's like 90s <laughs> live on the toilet. Like, oh shit, 90s on the toilet. Everybody join the live. <laughs> Babe, wake up. 90s on the toilet. That's funny. I'm inoculating Ben's rice on the toilet. Toilet tag. Emotional, whatever stupid uh, clickbait thumbnail. And yeah, there, that's... there it is. That's the that's the important part at the end. Don't forget to wipe down all your jars. Don't forget to Perfect. wipe all the calcium buildup off your jars. And that Perfect too every time. Yeah. Oh yeah, if you have hard water, I dump some white vinegar in the, the cycle. Yeah. That's it a, actually oh, that's, says that in that's the manual. That came off. Yeah, because I had some sitting in there uh, for a few days, and I just used it, and now it's like all over the jars. But that's fine. It's oh, but hard now water. after like putting all that grain on top, I have to go back and knock all these up, like shake them up. Yeah, that's pretty much it. They're all sealed. I'm in open air again, and you know it's fine. Just don't touch the. Uh, Filter patch, yeah. The, um, microfor tape, Should paper be tape, paper tape yeah. life. Yeah, it can yeah, turn so, into a vessel. So I think another thing worth mentioning is, um, and I forget. Oh, uh, yeah, I had a buddy stop by, uh, uh, my college buddy who was just traveling through the area, and so we got a chance to chit chat, and we were talking about how he is moving from, uh. Uh, a place where he's got a backyard and doesn't have nosy neighbors and he can do whatever he wants and no one's going to give him a hard time about anything to now he's moving into an apartment. And so now he's going, Oh, I'm going to have to start buying my substrate. I'm going to have to. So I said, this is really interesting. Uh, and we're talking about and having people realize that like what, what works for you, what works for me may not work for somebody else sold a sterilizer to a guy that works out of a still air box in new york city he said oh i could i can buy five flow hoods i i got money's not the issue the issue is i don't have anywhere for it so there's yeah. all so, sorts of different issues people have with growing and this is what's why it's important to not get too you know on your high exactly. horse and stuck yeah. on your way because everybody's just trying to find the way that works for them and, and their living situation, their their money situation, all that stuff. I think that's a part of why 90 is so popular is because I'm in an apartment. I've been in an apartment since I started 90. Mm -hmm. So these techniques not only come from trying to teach people how easy it really is, but it's because I also sat down and thought, you know, I could buy a flow hood, but where the hell am I going to put it? Yeah. In that little corner of my kitchen, that wouldn't. Uh, that's for my air fryer by the oven, you know, or that's for my toaster in my little apartment. So uh, like Shay did tonight, those substrate in jars on your on your stovetop is great. Same with grain. If you really want to move on from 90 second rice. Jars, I, I prefer jars for that stuff, but fruiting in bags is great as well. You can find videos on my YouTube yeah. channel about it, but everybody's space is different, so. What works for somebody else, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't mean give up right away. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> just try try a tech, try the tech that seems like it makes the most sense for you and 
and run it until you really feel like you know it. And, and then if you're happy with it, it can stay your tech. And if you're not happy with it or something changes, then you try something else. Maybe you, you know, run think... Uncle Ben's t- till the day you die. Maybe you try PF Tech. Maybe you buy a flow hood. Maybe you win the lottery. Maybe you, um, you know, uh, are just freaking killing it like Shay over here and, and random people just offer him jobs at uh, fancy labs. Whatever it is. Right. Just, you just, you just do, do what you're doing. You just, you just focus on the, the, the work and, and, and why you're doing it. And that's all that matters. You got to make noise for people to notice, you know, you can, you can yeah have like the best tech ever and it can be accessible to everyone. But if nobody knows about it, then, you know, if you, yeah, have, if true. you find something worthwhile, throw that shit on Reddit, and let people yep. know about it. Yeah, I can't. Oh, if anybody remembers the Capri Sun tech, where um, Capri Sun recently had clear bottoms with a clear juice. Right. It was like Pacific Cooler. Mm-hmm. So people oh, yeah. would just take take their leftover spore syringe and suck some into it, suck it back in, and the spores would germinate in the Capri Sun bag and become liquid culture. But then, you know, randomly, suddenly, suspiciously, they said due to supply chain issues, the clear bottoms went away. Now it's all foil bottom, so you can't see what's oh. going on in the Capri Sun juice. So it was kind of kind of weird how the timing turned out with that one. But it started there on Reddit. Yeah. You know, I mean, all these things, you know, of course it'd be great to have Uncle Ben's go, oh, we want to sponsor you. You're going to help us sell millions of these bags. The reality is that because of the marketing and all that, uh, we gotta wait till things are more legal on our front. Uh, yeah, unless I was truly one hundred percent gourmet with the Pipinos, yeah. you know. Yeah. You could, yeah. I mean, I think it's really worth investing in that. Yo, that's like my biggest thing. Honestly, my biggest thing. Like all the guys that grow sides, yo, put some work into some other species too, because like those will change your life as well. Yeah. Psilocybin is fucking amazing and it's helped me just as much as Lion's Man has. But you know, grow some Lion's Man, do some spore work on some Lion's Man, reishi. It's so fun to grow. It's so chestnut fun. Chestnut mushrooms. Oh, chestnuts yeah. look chestnuts crazy with the, with the armor on their caps. It looks like they're wearing armor and stuff. Yo, that was one of the ones that actually made me actually like get going because I was like, this Lion's Man, it's all spiky. And then they got like chestnuts and they're all spiky. I'm like, yo, this is so cool. Yeah, they're it, edible. It's like, like, damn, that looks man. crazy. Looks crazy. I could eat it. Yeah. Yo, have you seen uh, Old Man of the Woods? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Those look sick. And they're edible. Old Man of the Woods? Yeah. Yo, look yeah. it up real quick. It's worth it. It looks Let's like... See. If you pull up a picture... It looks fucking sick. You can't grow them, though. They have a microwave. Yet. Yet, yeah. Shay. Yeah. As soon as we figure out how to solidly like grow mycorrhizal things like without a huge hassle that that'll be the thing that i cultivate they just look like black hedgehogs they're like spiky and they have a they're a bully so they have like yeah, a round bottom they have a uh they have pores instead of gills a lot of mushrooms are of the woods hen of the woods chicken of the woods <laughs> i think that's where they might i don't find get it is <laughs> is that where they find them could be yeah yeah those look gnarly um i i think the i think you bring up an important point which is that um and i could not agree more the benefits i'm getting from drinking i'm drinking a tea right now from uh chaivana it's got lion's mane reishi and chaga in it and uh i i used to dose almost daily pretty close to daily on tylenol for some chronic arthritis related to some leg and knee injuries i got a rod in one of my legs and all this stuff and it just makes me real stiff in the morning and uh i don't take it anymore i just do the tea the 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 tea's got the anti-inflammatory properties equivalent to a thousand milligrams of tylenol every morning which is great No side effects yep no side effects not gonna kill my liver yeah the stuff that you think is per you like kind of accept defeat after a while like oh like this is what my life is like now some people they'll just try it 
some reishi tincture or like a reishi tea and yeah. that pain goes away and they're like i didn't realize that that could go away that's why i oh, think yeah. it's good for, i just i love handing stuff out to people be like hey just, just try this and see if it helps you and if it yeah. does come back and buy some but just take this and even if you don't come get it from me now you know about it so right. now you can tell somebody else and it just they will talk about it if something works for someone they'll talk about it you don't have to ask them to talk about it nope Hundred percent. Oh, that goes along the lines of uh, a lot of people don't realize as well. If you get, say, an isolated culture or a spore syringe, and you grow that out in your environment with your conditions, if so, if people follow like, um, like Mana from Heaven on Instagram with those awesome tub pics of of different magic mushrooms, if you get the same culture or the same spores or anything that they're dropping right now with Basidium equilibrium. If you try to grow them in your environment, it might not turn out the same because, right. you know, maybe you have less humidity or you have more humidity. So you have to find uh, like an in-between medium to where you were able to fruit it in the environment. You can clone that and keep those genetics going because now they're yeah. not only are they used to your grain and your substrate, but now they're used to your environment. and They're going to fruit almost perfectly every time. Yep. Yeah. It really depends. Yeah, every time I see one of those just awe-inspiring uh, mana from heaven grows, um, now I I relate to it a little differently than I did in the beginning. Now I go, this is serves as such a great um, sort of visual representation of what happens when you actually really take a variety of cultigen seriously and go, yep. I want I want to improve this. I want to you know, cycle through both, uh, you know, going back to spore and uh, cloning great fruit and then growing spore uh, off those great fruit. And over time, you will develop uh, a variety that really likes your climate and likes your style and what you do. And <clears throat> the testament to his process is just to see uniformity, uh, density uh, of fruit, it, it, it just highlights everything that he's doing well. Um, and well, you don't, don't, if you're busy growing a hundred different varieties, you're not going to experience that life because you're, you're just, you're, you're, you know, it's like Pokemon Go. You're just trying to catch them all. And uh, yeah. I, I totally understand that allure. Yeah, I, I think I, a lot I, of people have that, that issue. It's like, that. So many different varieties. Oh, I need yeah. uh, Jack Frost. Now I need, oh, Penis Envy 7. Oh, now I need Ape. Like, focus on one. But at some point, you should just go, okay, I got this one I like. I'm going to really just spend like six months with this one and see what I can do with it. Yep. I think that is really worth doing. That's yeah, why a lot like... of people will find the first time they move away from magic mushrooms and spore syringes and liquid cultures, the first time they move on to a gourmet strain where it fruits almost perfectly every time is because that's been tried and true, oh, yeah. tested over so many different environments, so many different like cultivators yeah. for the market, you know, to be sold. It's like that's how North Spore, their kits are are a great strain of whatever species oh, you're yeah. trying to grow. They've been through it. So you can just cut it, mist it, and there's the fruits. Yeah, and they're they're a really big commercial. Um, you know, agaricus suppliers where they just send you the bricks like ready to go, and uh, you know, just uh, the, the, like you're saying, those those cultures, the gourmet cultures that most people are messing with, have been just oh yeah. Here we yep, go. That's what it's all about. Tiger pocking it. Um. They're just really, really proven cultigens. They're just. Absolutely. Shout out Tiger Drop. But That's yo, how many years ago on Shroomery? <laughs> tiger Drop in it. If you, guys, if you guys are watching this, how many people are in here right now? 158. Jesus Christ. So, yo, I know at least one of you guys is going to be walking around tomorrow. Or you're going to see a mushroom. Now, if that, if that mushroom is edible, you have the power to get that onto so many tables. Yeah. 
is the mushroom just wants to it just wants to clone itself and wants to reproduce and uh it's it's so easy you just like even if you don't want to make plates and i totally understand that because that's that's probably like at least for me that's the most annoying thing is because i want to do like infinite work but then i need to make infinite plates so i feel oh, yeah. like tip of the cap they have really consistent plates um and they're they're not too bad they, they're really good quality um not too bad on price is what i meant but um, i mentioned that in the youtube chat earlier is like if you go out and you see like a gourmet mushroom that you can 100 percent identify take that clone it you know or get a spore print get it going to where you you took that wild variety that wild that wild strain of that species it already fruited out there bring it in and see if you can fruit it indoors as long as you can 100 percent identify it because there are a lot of lethal lookalikes to stuff that you can eat yeah. yeah, even if that thing is lethal or like poisonous, you'll be fine just cultivating it. Like you can just right. mess around and yeah, if you yeah, if you don't yeah. want to eat it. Oh, like bioluminescent fungi. Those are those are pretty cool. Man, that was one of the first things I tried to grow. I forgot what it was called, but I got it from I think it might have been liquid fungi. Um I don't remember what it was called, but I couldn't get it to fruit. I got this little thing to come out, but yeah, yeah I think a lot of those fun. have not really been domesticated, for lack of a better term. Yeah, they're like a weird niche. Nobody, nobody really has them going on. You know, that'd be that'd be cool. Do you have any cultures on that? No, well, actually, no. I think Full Send Organics did send me one. I might have one somewhere Our because he was growing one. He was growing it on the Aspen Chips animal bedding. And I think he got yeah. it maybe to start pinning like you did, but not actual fruits. Yeah. I have to look yeah, into my like, collection. Yeah. I've got a lot of stuff going on where I also need to clean stuff up. Just keep Good adding point. up, you know? You got cultures, spores, and it's like, oh, I got this and that, and then you lose track of everything. There you <laughs> go. There you go, guys. There's one. There we go. Yeah, look at that. That's so cool. Like I wanted a bunch of those in my like in my hallway, like showing the way in the dark, but it didn't oh, work I out that way. That's all. That's all you want, Shay. That's all I want. <laughs> that, that's that. Now I know you are truly telling me the truth because that's that 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 sounds. Everyone's like, I want a million dollars. I want a big house. I want this. No, you don't. You want mushrooms. You want mushroom nightlights. That's what you I really want. want. Bro, I want them to keep reproducing, like, in my house. No. Just infinitely. Like, what? what's stopping us from making, like, a, a putting a little bit of substrate, leaving some air in there, and they just keep recycling? Yeah. Like, a little biosphere. And when they fruit, they glow. So you don't even have to, like, go check on them. You're like, oh, it's glowing. You must have fruited again. Just, like, a cool little thing going on. All right, so that... um. That first one, the Mycena, I pulled up. Josh Barnhart uh, mentioned that one. And then my buddy Rufus mentioned this one. Um, it is Pinellas uh, Stypticus. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't know Pinellas were could glow. Oh, it's not. I have a Pinellas serotitis mm -hmm. from, from the Mushroom Shop LLC. They found this purple and yellow uh anella it's fucking crazy nice. i couldn't get that the fruit either i don't think it's really finished but um i'm gonna work on that it's it, it's it you should at least like look it up if you mm -hmm. just type in anella serotinus you're probably not gonna find it go to the mushroom shop llc on etsy it might be on there or check on uh, Instagram. It's such a striking purple, like almost like a, so the underside where the gills are, it's bright, bright yellow. The top is purple to black. So you got this black oh, I've and seen yellow. Those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it looks sick as hell. I wanted to cultivate one to be like fully black. So you just be like, oh, black and yellow, black and yellow. But <laughs> oh, yeah. That's on the back burner. See, 
when that song was hot, I was in LA, so they redid it to Purp and Yellow. Purp and Yellow. For, for the Lakers. So I always remember it as Purp and Yellow. But. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, I actually do. I should bring that back out of the slant because I was really excited to get it going, but I couldn't get it to fruit properly. Um, I think what it is, I would get these big, bright yellow pens, and it's like, oh, it's going. But as soon as it detects that it's over like 50 degrees, it just the pens melts into like a yellow, a yellow liquid. Mm. So like, nah. <laughs> yeah, I think. I, so I don't know if you follow. There's like some cool terrarium dudes you can follow on Instagram that do these really elaborate and just mind blowing terrariums, like self sufficient, you know, ecosystems. And I think every once in a while they have some mushrooms in it, but usually not. Um, but I think that would be really cool to see if you could create a self-sufficient, you know, perpetually fruiting terrarium that, that also has a fungal presence in it. Oh, that is also on the back burner for the lab because we already have like some plants in there. Mm -hmm. I want to get, see if I can get carnivorous plants and uh, some kind of, I don't care what fungi it is, just any kind of fungi that will fruit to mm -hmm. live in the same thing and just like oh, yeah. the cycle, put some uh, some bugs in there. I don't know shit about bugs, so I got to learn about bugs. So this is way on the back burner, but I, I would love to be able to sell these little jars of like, like a small universe. Yeah. I think, I, think I'm I mean, so... It's pretty much like uh, what why aquariums are cool, right? Like, because just yeah. for a second, you can just gaze. I mean, I used to have saltwater aquarium. I spent so much money and time on them, but it was because just the experience of being able to connect to that world was so cool. Yeah. I'm trying to find. Uh... I almost got myself a reptile so I could uh, kind of have that feeling. It's a. Uh... I had a uh, a bearded dragon for a while, and those things are freaking amazing. Yeah, plants and animals. I mean, all of us. I think any true mycophile probably is just a biologist, you know, at at, at heart, and just loves living things. And you know, yeah. we just pick our our living thing we're going to be the most obsessed with. All right, this is good. You guys are seeing some shake techniques. I definitely agree that oh. um, wh whether it's break and shake uh, for grain spawn or you're shaking up your uh, spawned bulk uh, bags, um, you can't shake it too much. Yeah. You really can't. If you think you shook it enough, shake it about twice as much time, and then you're probably close. That's what I said about the 90 rice bags earlier. Yep, exactly. Yeah, you just, I, I just spawned a bulk on something, and uh, <clears throat> I, I, as I'm seeing everything, you know, uh, colonize, I'm looking and I'm going, wow, I thought for sure I mixed you missed that up a spot. so good, and I missed one little corner. You missed wasn't a spot. As good as I thought. Yep. What kind of ratio are you uh, typically doing? I'm three to one most of the time, unless I want something fast and I just want to get spores off it. Then I do yep. one to one. Mm -hmm. Three to three to one, I think, is probably the magic number in, in most cases. I think you can do two to one in bags, just fine. Are you talking they, about three to one grain to sub or sub yeah, to like grain? Yeah, like spawn to sub. Oh, okay. So you're doing more grain than substrate. I just say three to one, but three is the the substrate. Oh, okay. Like, what? Well, yeah, oh, it, it, it would, ne so it would never. Grain. It would never be. Right. That's it, why I'm like, it, wait it a minute. Never be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, no. yeah. Right. One to three. Is what I say. See, everybody has their own little little thing. Yeah. I I usually go grain to sub, one, to two. See, there you go, and it works. I like sub one. But I go one more and get some big ass three. Get two flushes yeah. and get it out of there. But yeah. uh, when you do like one one, you have to soak. But if you do one one, get your first flush, time it right so like they're not wasting any energy, like trying to crawl up the bag and shit. Mm -hmm. Get it 
right on time. They use all the water and then you soak it and yep. then you get it again. Ooh, big fruit. Yep. It does work great. Um, I do the three to one just because I am lazy and that way I don't have to do all that. And I do find that you, I prefer to sort of build up to the rehydration. So with the one to one, I've had some situations where, uh, for whatever reason, I rehydrated it too much and it just kind of sits there for way too long. So I, I like doing three to one and for one to three, one to 90, one to <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. If we both thought you're talking about three parts grain to one right. part substrate. That's yeah. madness. If anyone does that consistently and, and has consistent results, I'm like, what kind of grain are you using? Yeah, fully hydrated grain. Popcorn. It's like, oh, God, just like mush. It's gotta be fully high. Hy- yeah, you're just not getting enough. Not getting exactly. enough I cook hydration. the grain until it's like overcooked white rice, and then I spread it like peanut butter across the bottom of the pot. Uh, the fucking uh the tub and then sprinkle uh the substrate on top like imagine mm-hmm. that might work try it fafo so, you never know just grow I mean, bread I, I i saw somebody just do a grow um they wanted to see how thin their cake could be and it was maybe <laughs> three quarters of an inch and he got a full flush oh wow full flush so it can happen it, There's it, enough it, water. It'll it, work. it was in a bag. I, I think in a tub you might it might evaporate too quickly, but because yeah. the, the trick is really just getting that evaporative process to occur at the right rate. Um, you know, I think that's why the the three inch you know thick cakes are are probably nice, kind of a good target to hit. But whatever works, man. It doesn't matter. I in bags I just do a a, a quart of spawn and three quarts of sub and that's it every once in a while if i have something left over i'll I'll do two quarts of the spawn and four quarts of the sub so i'm closer to two to one but or one to two 90 i don't want to get my order wrong one to 90 one part grain to 90 percent substrate there you go you got to get that going see we'll see how it turns out (laughs) all right guys um we're, we're hitting the two and a half hour mark and uh I, yeah, I gotta get up super early. My wife's uh, leaving at like be like way before the crack of dawn and and all that stuff. So like, uh, we're yeah. gonna call it a night, guys. Uh, thanks to the 150 plus people who stuck around yeah. uh, all night for the show. Um, I hope you guys all, you know, uh, the other great thing about low tech techs is uh, no matter what you do, if if you just want to try something different, you got so many techs to choose from. So yes, sir. And you yeah, don't always a need a pressure cooker. Low tech could also mean, you know, yeah. even lower than the low. You can, that's, you can that's what we need to do. 90. We need to do, um, we got to do a, how cheap can we grow mushrooms? There we go. Yeah. No, we no, just like start with nothing and see how inexpensively we can do it. What is the most take inexpensive a $2 way? bill and see what we could do with it. There you go. It's like a TV show. Everybody's given $50. (laughs) Who can grow the most mushrooms? There we go. Hey, we might have a Wednesday night TV idea. On ABC. Yep, there you go. Dancing with the mushrooms. Yep. All right, guys. Uh, Well, thank you so much. Uh, 92nd. uh, So uh, everybody's got a YouTube channel. Everybody's got a Patreon. Everybody's got all the things now because we listen to Rookie and and we don't want to screw up. We don't want to make them mad. So we're doing all the things. Um, Thanks to Rookie. Uh, Great, great guy. uh, Great advice giver. And uh, he's right. He's just right. So uh, 90, uh, the game show you said tentatively July. What did you say? Oh, yeah. So we're shooting for around July 11th. And I don't know if we, um, uh, I don't know if if, if I can say, but in the works, Gary from Fresh from the Farm Punk Guy may be the next contestant. Ooh. Um, as we keep working up to having the viewers. You're going to have to make the, the questions really hard, dude. Yeah. Don't let know, him the, off easy. 
we're working up to eventually having everything open for contestants and we're shooting for july 11th but as i mentioned earlier in the stream like my work schedule is kind of fluctuating yeah. right now which isn't normal just something weird happened so um and also patreon is very close i keep saying that in all the streams right now patreon is very close um, go back in this stream and listen to what I talked about with it, and you'll hear all the good stuff. Um, what else can I plug? My website, 90secondmycology.com, slash links and slash supplies will get you started with 90 Second Rice. Amazing. And um, I know Shay has, I think you went into Oven Tech more in depth on your channel for people who are more interested on yeah, pouring over the oven as well. I have some older videos where I went into that, I'm going to redo all of them. They're pretty old. I've been focusing like stuff happens so often. And I learned so many new things like every week that I look at my old videos and I'm like, eh. so I just give like little updates on my Instagram at microdex mushrooms. Uh, but I will be rolling out some more permanent feeling videos on YouTube, probably, um, maybe like next month ish. Cool. Um, in the meantime, I'm making videos over on plant cell technology. We're starting from scratch and we're learning. This is, I know this is the, uh, the low tech stream, but we're actually in a laboratory over there. So oh, yeah. if you hang out on my channel, you get low tech and you get lab. So it's like this. I just throw a fucking lab coat on. Go Actual bugs and burners burning. Yep. Yeah. They actually don't like open flame over there, but I bring in like a lighter because I, I like to see my, my <laughs> blade glowing. Speaking yeah. of, I need to get your, what's it called? Well, sterilizer, we'll work on that. Yeah, your oh, sterilizer. The induction sterilizer? Yeah, I need one because I'm going through these lighters too much. Like I'm, I'm working with stuff like every day. And butane. We'll make it yeah. happen. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Uh, so everybody watching, uh, you know, low tech is, is, is not to be poo pooed. It absolutely works. People have great results all the time with it. Um, you know, give it a shot, especially those of you who maybe are reluctant because of cost or space or whatever. Um, and you can grow mushrooms just like Shay. He's growing amazing gourmets all the Look time. Look at those antlers on that Rishi right there. Yep, exactly. I want to take a um, bite of one of them. And uh, all the all the links to all the ninety stuff, all, all of Shay's stuff. Look at that, Rishi for days. Those look Ooh. fantastic, dude. Yeah. Love it. Um, and we're gonna have somebody on soon. We're gonna talk about extraction techniques. So we'll, we'll yeah. be getting into tinctures and extractions yeah, and tinctures. all that stuff. Oh, what about gummies too? Uh, gourmet gummies. Oh, we'll, oh yeah, we'll be talking about that. Yeah, gourmet. He, he he he's the man. I'm not gonna reveal who it is, but we we got the guy who know knows all about uh, extractions. Look at that gorgeous stuff. That's a great finale to the show tonight. Yeah, great finale. Just a bunch of antlers, gourmet antlers. Look at just them. drowning in reishi antlers. Oh. I love it. All right, guys. Uh, I will talk to you later. Yeah, man. All right, so that was Shea Microdex Mushrooms, Frank, a.k.a. 90 Second Mycology. Uh, now we know his name. I didn't know it. I talked to him a bunch. I didn't know it was Frank. Now I do. Um, <clears throat> see, I learned my thing. I learned my thing tonight. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, hope you guys uh, uh, enjoy and le learn a little bit more about Uncle Ben's, getting to know 90 um uh finding out what shay's been up to and seeing what oven tech's all about definitely worth giving it a go um it's a great way to create a sterile environment for all your sterile work um until next week i hope you guys have a wonderful week growing mushrooms learning about growing mushrooms all the good stuff mushroom related mm -hmm.